Yo, it's your boy Tracy News, and I'm back at y'all with another one. Appreciate all love, support. Thanks for everyone who subscribed to the channel. If you ain't subbed to the channel, make sure you do. Make sure you join the membership. Shout out my boy C Hood on the road to 50k, man. Shout out at J Pay Beats, man. You need mixing mastering on the music. Can't go to the studio because you got ops. Holla at J Pay Beats, man. And that hungry mama 773, man. Shout out my boy Prince Easy for his restaurant doing big things out there. Shout out to the whole mod squad, man. Shout out to the whole Trench News team, the mod squads, all my mods, man. Yo, shout out to all y'all, man. I'm going to go in the road, smash that like button, man. Today we're doing the reaction video of King Vine, man. Lord, Trap Lord Ross, man. I'm going to give you my opinion on it. And uh, shout out to Kaya Baby, man, because she asked me to do this shit. So I'm doing it because she asked me ahead of time. Juice Crew, what's up, my boy? Shout out Sharpshooter Judah, man. Shout out ASAP Tip. Shout out MVP, man. Shout out Ashley Corbin. Shout out Made Media Magazine, man. If y'all ain't subscribed to their channels, man, make sure you do. Jay Sam, what's up? Vincent Brown, Adrian West. Uh, shout out Bobby Dillon, man. Shout out NC, what's up? Andre Foster, man. What's up with y'all? Jeffrey Gordon, what's up? Rocco Snow, what's up? Shout out to the whole New York, man. Uh, Black Hope, what's up? Joe DeMar, what's up? Chris Partlow, what's up, my boy? Big Dog Jayski. What's up, Rob? What's up? Kaya Baby, what's up? J Jay Breezy, Slump Gang, what's up? King of My TV, what's up? Um, that Beezy, what's up? My sharpshooter in the building, y'all behave, man. Um, Ramsey Eubanks, what's up? Shout out Ashley Corbin, what up, Mo? Fatherhood over everything, man. I respect you, TV. Fatherhood over every hood. On that, I'm trying to tell you, better tell these young niggas again, fatherhood. Young Cecile, what's up? Hippie 420, what's up, my boy? Shout out to everybody on here, man. T. Williams, everybody who just joined the Roderick Ean. What's up, cuz? Two Arms Security, Mark Hughes, what's up? Shout out to all y'all on here, man. Um, DG Lee. Shout out Cam Capone, man. I got a Cam Capone coming up soon. She'll be dropping tomorrow or this weekend. Shout out to Cam Capone, man. We got a new interview coming up. Shout out Humble Soul. Man, Humble Soul got an interview coming up um that should be dropping too so make sure y'all look out for them man shout out everybody on here you new to the channel man smash that like button subscribe to the channel we getting into the king von trap lord ross man we're gonna get into that first king von trap lord ross man this guy he from overseas and he real dope man with the content now you got a lot of people saying why is this dude from canada or why is this dude from london or switzerland why is he reporting about our stuff in Chicago? Well, duh. Did you go to school? I'm talking about did you pass eighth grade? Did you go to the dare program? Man, all the shit that he's saying, man, is in the fucking things that they said. How can you dare fix your mouth to get mad at him? Anybody, bro. Like, how can you get mad at him? Just keep it real, bro. It don't matter where you from. On that thing. Why wasn't no niggas getting on the internet and said, man, y'all need to stop putting that shit on the internet? On that thing, bro, like, come on, man. Once you put something on the internet, it's called public records, sir. Like, let's be real, man. I don't know Trap Lord Ross from a can of paint. But right is right, wrong is wrong, man. On that thing. Vaughn told us everything that he that he was about. On that thing, bro. It's like everybody, everybody wanna, everybody wanna like. The panties in a bunch when a motherfucker report about this shit. This is what this man rapped about. You know what I'm talking about? Whether whether it's true or false, this is what he rapped about. This is what he represented in every tweet and everything. So we're going to get into that. I ain't watched Trap Lord Ross, so I don't know what he said. But Kaya Baby has something to me, and I want to see, you know what I'm talking about? And maybe I can confirm some things, you know? They said he had 11 bodies, man. So I got to see these guys who they talking about, man. You know what I'm talking I'm going to be fair with y'all, too. I ain't going to bullshit y'all with none of that. If he hit it on the head, I'm going to say he the GOAT. But if he capping, I'm going to say it's cap. You hear me? So y'all check this out, man. We're doing an audio reaction video. Y'all smash that like button. Shout out to everybody on my channel. Shout out Kaya, baby, man. All my mind squad. I love y'all. Shout out C-Hood, man. We on the road to 100K. We ain't trying to do nothing frivolous. We really ain't trying to block nobody. Man, if you got a if you got a disagreement, that's cool, man. Just keep your bullshit to yourself, though, man. You know what I'm talking about? We respect everybody's opinion. Everybody has an opinion, man. But if we ain't playing, my minds ain't the type of minds ain't playing. This ain't the normal channel. So if you want to play them games, my mind's going to wipe your ass. Don't come in my inbox talking shit. Now, we're going to do the reaction video, man. 
Shout out Trap Laura Ross, man. Shout out Trap Laura Ross. I don't know this guy, but I do know King Von. And I and, and I want to see what's going on. You know what I'm talking about? So we're going to listen. Y'all listen to it. And we're going to get into this story right now, y'all. It's Trenches News, man. This video contains themes of violence, death, and gang activity. This video is for educational and documentary purposes only. This video is not intending to incite or encourage illegal behavior in any way. Every effort has been made to remove any content which violates YouTube's community guidelines. If you'd like to see an uncut version of this video with everything that I can't show you on YouTube, head on over to patreon.com slash traplawrots. Supporters of the channel also get access to my recent vlogs with academics and Adam22 too late. Now, how get that in the buckle? I need. Hey, nigga, you got you just promoted your oh, shit and my ball. shit, trap lord. I need a I need a hundred ball, ball, trap lord. You just did some bullshit. Beard shooter in the Chicago gang wars, something he would be more than happy to broadcast to the world. Von would be seen in clips posted to social media, sliding in cars with his partner in crime, T Roy, and others, rowing up gang signs and saying that they're smoking tuca. Yeah. <laughs> And he'd be seen with his boys mobbing deep in trap houses. And Von would even broadcast his activities rolling with the gang to the local store. Von was surprisingly open about his gang-banging life on social media, and he would be particularly active on Twitter during these violent months. He would tweet openly that he was planning to shoot at random people in traffic. He would tweet that he is STLK, or a St. Lawrence killer, and interestingly, around these times, on the 18th of October 2012, O-Block native Chief Keith would release his hit song, Love Sosa, a legendary Chicago drill anthem with lyrics about killing people for disrespecting O-Block. At this point in 2012, Chief Keith had become a global rap star off the back of his single, I Don't Like, which was given an all-star remix by Kanye West, and ended up landing at number 73 on the Billboard charts. That song had lyrics about the gang wars in Chicago and lives being lost, and Chief Keith's music was becoming legendary for painting a picture of reality on Chicago's most dangerous block. Of course, who could forget Chief Keef's classic anthem, Three Hunter, a song with lines all about the young'uns on his block gunning people down, and a track that made it famous to diss Tuca, with Black Disciple rappers beginning a trend of saying that they're smoking on Tuca, a sign of disrespect to Shondale Gregory, who had been killed in 2011. Now, King Von himself had an interesting relationship with Chief Keef's music. Von would tweet that him and T-Roy are the real-life people who these rappers are making their songs about. Von seemed proud of his career as a real gangster, the true story behind Chicago drill music. In fact, it seemed from his tweets that he took great pride in this. He would regularly quote lyrics from drill songs by Chief Keef and others, and he would continue with tweets expressing his intentions to shoot up the ops. In one, he says he just got a new gun and can't wait to use it, and he even claimed in one tweet to have shot a woman by mistake trying to shoot at a man, ending the tweet saying, I don't care, same thing to me. It seems that Von really had to tweet pretty much any street activity that he was involved in during this time. He would tweet that he hasn't touched or seen a revolver in a while, and on October the 29th, Von would tweet saying that he was avoiding T-Roy because he was winning, presumably referring to T-Roy having a superior kill counter. So Von would tweet literally saying that he was trying to catch up with T-Roy's kill counter, saying, give me until Friday. And just the day after this tweet, he would find what he was looking for. On October the 30th, Von would tweet that it's his main man T-Roy's birthday. And later that day, Von tweeted that he was drilling like OD. At 8.45 a.m., Von tweeted, check the step. Hey, shout out to Trap Laura Ross, man. Shout out to Trap Laura Ross. Um, this trench news for y'all just got up in here, man. Hey, look, man. Hey, look, for y'all just got up in here, I'm going to say this one more time, man. My opinion. Uh, for everybody who who uh, they got their own opinion you really can't you cannot be mad bro at trap lord ross you cannot be mad at him bro all these fucking tweets is before people who even blogging knew about him so all these tweets is when people wasn't even aware of vine like the average motherfucker who on here blogging they wasn't even aware of vine you know what i'm talking about the shit that vine was really doing until he started rapping bro about it so 
we can't be mad at Trap Lord Ross, but I, I think I, I'm I'm thinking like you know I'm talking about um he on he is so far so far man you know what I'm talking about he on point with the with the tweets and all this shit so let's keep it going. A reference to who has the most bodies in the ongoing gang war. According to the police, less than 30 minutes after this tweet was made, at around 9.13 a.m., P5, a.k.a. Crank, real name Derek Johnson, would be shot multiple times in the 6200 block of South Eberhardt Avenue. The 23-year-old was rushed to the hospital, but pronounced dead at 9.54 a.m. The incident report would record the time of the shooting as 9.13 a.m. in the Chicago Times Up, which on Twitter, for me, would display as 3.13 p.m. That means that just three minutes before the recorded time of the shooting, Von tweeted, laughing my ass off. Then at 9.13, the time that the police estimated the shooting took place, Von tweets, his 45 makes his ass do 40 flips. And then only a few hours after this early morning murder, just after noon, Von would tweet, the early bird catches the worm. And then going on to tweet about Ops making the news, saying, Hey, 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 let's keep it one thou wow, man. Let's keep it one thou wow. This is news, man. <laughs> hey, look, from the outside looking in, right, though, and say you is a Lord Trap, Lord Ross, or something like that, right? And you reading a motherfucking tweet saying the early bird get the worm. You thinking the nigga time about a payday or some cash or some shit. The early bird get the worm selling rocks or some shit. This nigga time about hunting the nigga down, man. Come on, y'all. Let's finish this, though. He does his thingy thing for real, saying that he erases people like he drew them, and tweeting that his ops aren't trying to win like he is, and saying that he is doing this for OD, Platoon, Sheroy, and White White. Vaughn would claim to be finding a lot of things funny that evening, once again tweeting numerous times that his 40 made someone do 40 flips. As the days went by, Vaughn's tweets would get even more bold. And just the day after the murder, he would tweet pondering whether he was messed up in the head and indicating that he thinks he's gone crazy. Things would get even more incriminating just two days later when Von put out a tweet reading, Damn, Modell got killed in October. And Crack, who's going to get killed in November? Stay tuned. And he would tweet, R.I.P. Crack and <laughs> this, Modell. As well as tweeting, I mean a laugh. God damn, Von man. Von even replied to Kat Woody, who tweeted each other about going to a funeral, with Von saying that he was on his way too, and even offering them a ride. Vaughn also tweeted at Wooski, asking if he knows who made Modell World or Crack Crew, another reference to crews renaming themselves after a fallen member who's passed away. Now at this point, Vaughn is establishing a clear pattern, getting the location of his targets, shooting them dead, and then celebrating publicly on Twitter. And within only a few weeks of the P5 incident, yet another high-profile murder would take place, with Vaughn's involvement having been debatable, but his Twitter account telling a very different <coughs> Hey man, hey, hey, this some Looney Tune shit right here. I ain't gonna lie, man. This shit crazy, bro. Like from the from the tweets though, and you educated pro and you ain't no criminal. I ain't gonna lie, man. If you ain't no criminal, you ain't in no street nigga, none of that, bro. And you reading these tweets, bro, they disturbing, bro. It just is what it is, bro. Like they disturbing. You know, you can't be mad at him, man. Von said the shit though. I ain't gonna lie, Von said the shit. So I mean, they they the people who arguing about this shit now, they should have been telling Vaughn don't say that shit like that record label for instance, whatever record label Vaughn was with. Why didn't they? Why don't? Why is they still putting out the the same music that they trying to strike his page for? Just think about it. They trying to strike him down his page, his video, but they study making money off the music that that Vaughn putting out. Like, does that make sense? Yeah, Twitter, paper trail, man. But we're going to keep it going, man. It don't make no sense, man. Rest in peace to Model and P5 so far. So far they saying that it's two people dead right now. <laughs> that wasn't me, y'all. In November 2012, King Von would be tweeting openly about killing. He'd say that he was the go-to guy for hits in his area. He'd also say that he was the captain of the drill team, tweeting about murder and homicide, saying that he's a hitter by himself, and that the whole of O Block are coming for their ops. He would even tweet that he was sacrificing people, as well as bizarre tweets about how much he liked cereal, something that I personally believe was a coded message, indicating that Von was beginning to see himself as a serial killer. 
something that he would continue to do throughout his career. From here, Von would continue tweeting about wanting to shoot his ops in the face and get up close and personal, alluding to committing murder and tweeting that he had big balls and does things that other people would only dream of doing. King Von would boldly tweet that he will never get convicted of a murder, saying that he would never set himself up to go down for a body. He would mock his ops, saying some make it out alive and some make it onto the news and die. Also during this time, Von would even react to Barack Obama winning the 2012 election, something ironic considering the fact that Michelle Obama apparently also hailed from Oblock. But even in celebrating this monumental news, Von would also tweet that a black president with ties to his city simply wouldn't stop him from killing his ops. On November the 7th, 2012, Von would tweet about bodies dropping and beating the case. Later that evening, he would tweet that he was out sliding with T. Roy, who he himself would also tweet saying that he's about to go and get his gun, before replying to K.I., who had just tweeted a list of a bunch of names of people associated with Oblock who had been killed, with T-Roy retaliating, providing his own list of people from K.I.'s hood who they had apparently killed, as well as tweeting, hashtag bang, just after midnight. Then, the following morning, the news would report on the shooting of a 17-year-old by the name of Rodney Stewart, a.k.a. Boss Trell. Boss Trell had been found with a gunshot wound to the head around 6.50 a.m., Hey, I can tell y'all right now, man, this cap, man, they ain't kill Boss Trail, man. If you know, you know, they didn't kill Boss Trail, man. On that thing, long live Boss Trail, long live Taffer, man. His killer, his killer did not go to jail because the simple fact that Trail had called over that man and warned them that he was what he was coming to do, man. So when he got killed, the killer got caught and he was let go, man. And it wasn't no King Von or what's the name, but we're going to continue, though. But I'm just telling y'all, this facts. This this ain't no fiction. This shit is a fact. On that thing. And was immediately rushed to hospital. And he would even remain alive for several hours, during which time he was visited by friends from the neighborhood, like FBG Cash. But while Boss Trail was in the hospital fighting for his life, Von and T-Roy would be tweeting. T-Roy tweeted, man down, only hours after the body was discovered, with Von tweeting, hashtag, the struggle prompting T-Roy to infer that Von was behaving like the police. Von would follow up on this tweet, saying that people aren't dying on time, and T-Roy would also tweet mockingly, saying, no, Trell, stay alive. Then, in since-deleted tweets, allegedly by King Von, he would suggest that he had actually spent the day trying to get K.I. on the phone. However, Boss Trell would be pronounced dead that night at 11.30pm on the 8th of November 2012. And the following day, King Von would take to Twitter once again to mock Boss Trell and his ops. He would tweet that SDL doesn't stand for St. Lawrence, but instead for steady taking L's. Another tweet would drop with King Von telling people, don't worry about who killed who, just be glad that you didn't get killed in Shah. This was followed by another tweet aimed at Boss Trell, saying, lol, you ain't a boss to me. Many theories suggested that T-Roy and Von and possibly others were involved in this murder. Some have said that it was T-Roy, others have said that it's Von, or potentially even the two of them together. But it is worth mentioning that there's an alternative theory that Boss Trail was actually murdered by someone completely unrelated to this feud, who was apparently trying to retrieve a gun that had been taken from him. But regardless of who was responsible, Von and T- Hey, now that's facts. That's facts right there, that's facts. Now the second part, what he just said, that shit facts. He didn't get killed by nobody from Old Block or Von them. But the reason why Von them knew is because Quiet Money is a person from Old Block. He from Quiet Money, but he from Old Block, but his daddy from Quiet Money. So that's how he found out about it. But yeah, Trail only got shot one time with one bullet, and they ran, and they know who the dude is who did the shit, bro. Like for real. So yeah, he 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 cleared it up on that one. Roy was certainly happy to see Boss Trail gone, and they would continue to tweet boldly about it publicly. Their ops on Twitter would warn T. Roy over the disrespect, but for King Von, tweeting about the murders going on in the streets was a must. Von would post saying that the ops are dying frequently, and that he doesn't plan on slowing down. He would say that he will kill an op anywhere, and once again reference cereal. Saying that he eats cereal after shooting people, another hint in the ongoing joke that Von is indeed becoming a serial killer. Von would even mock the ops for having funerals. He simply didn't care what anybody thought. It seemed that Von was hell-bent on killing his enemies, and he would be hell-bent on tweeting every single time something negative occurred in the streets. However, Von's days would be numbered, and following the next hit that he was implicated in, he would tweet once again, perhaps a little too recklessly this time, finding himself behind bars for over a year. Let's take a few moments. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, there's some dope-ass content. Um. You just not getting on here? Hey, shout out to Trap Lord Ross, man. Can't nobody get mad for my city or none of that. Hey, if anybody want to get mad at somebody, 
Y'all got to check the little niggas in the neighborhood, man. Yeah, y'all right. A motherfucker from London should know what's going on in Chicago. But for the simple fact that a person from Chicago uh, putting it out on the internet for London to know about it, how can you get mad? This man, it's called public record, man. So shout out to Trap Lord Ross. If y'all just got on here, we're doing a reaction video to it. You know, I'm trying to see what he's saying and how he got it. You know what I'm talking about? But he, he did some research. He dug deep through the tweets and Twitter, left a footprint, a digital footprint, and he got all that shit, bro. He got everything he needed, bro. To calm the mind and relax the body. After the deaths of Modell, P5, and Boss Trell, you would think that King Von would have kept a low profile, but no. He would continue to tweet suspiciously while the killing continued. However, when the next person lost their life, King Von's tweets would go to a whole nother level of self-incrimination, and he would actually find himself on the wrong side of the law. On the 19th of November 2012, 32-year-old man named James Holman, aka Lil James, would be standing on his porch on the 6,000 block of South Michigan Avenue around 8.20pm. At this point, four people would approach his property, opening fire, shooting him in both the arm and chest, with him being pronounced dead in hospital less than an hour later. Only 23 minutes after this murder, Von would tweet, man, not on anything, followed by another tweet reading, clown ass. Von was mocking somebody, but we didn't know who or what for. Meanwhile, T-Roy would put out a tweet asking if somebody got shot yesterday. And then, only six hours after the shooting, Von would tweet that he kills GDs often. And then, in another rare deleted tweet that somebody else from Oblock quote tweeted just 21 minutes later, Von would apparently brag that he has killed 5 GDs and shot 10. With a later news article even confirming that James Holman, the man who was killed most recently, was indeed a gangster disciple. Furthermore, a police report on the Lil James murder would describe the shooter's height and build, which apparently matched Von's description. Now, Von tweeting that he had killed five GDs after the death of Lil James is particularly interesting, because there's always been a lot of speculation on exactly how many people Von had killed and who specifically he was responsible for killing. And at this point in time, Von had been associated with six murders in total. So if Von himself is apparently confessing that he has killed five... All right, okay, 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 y'all. So now I'm seeing the pictures, man. I'm seeing the pictures. And it's saying that he killed Modell. It's saying that he killed P5. It's saying that he killed Boss Trill. It's saying that he killed a guy named Lil James. It's saying that he killed Doc, which is Modell cousin. And it's saying that he killed Dirty Rail, which is an older gyro member. An older, older gyro member. Um, That's six motherfuckers so far. All right, we're going to keep it going. Um, shout out to Tribal Lua Ross once again, man. Trenches News ain't got no beef with you, man. And nobody should, man. Like these record labels, whatever record label Vaughn was on who's striking this page, like they foul, bro, because they steady putting out the same music that they striking this page for. You know, if you saying that his music was an art, then um, Trap Lord Ross, his videos is art. He doing it for art to educate. You know what I'm talking about? And Vaughn, he said this shit, bro. Everything he say, he mean it, bro. At this point, then it's likely that just one of these murders he had nothing to do with. From here, Von would continue to tweet throughout the day, saying things like, dissing him will get your people killed, and another asking openly, who made Crack Block? Another reference to the murder of Crack, or P5. Unsurprisingly, the authorities would catch up with Von just three days after the murder of Lil James. Perhaps they've read his tweets. Von's capture would be confirmed by a tweet from his sister, from his own Twitter account, saying that he would be in jail for Thanksgiving, with Von's charges later being revealed as unlawful possession of a firearm. Numerous mugshots of Von would later circulate online, and Von would end up in jail for over a year, for a period spanning from November 2012 to February 2014. And in the meantime, his mother, sister, and friends would all tweet from his Twitter account calling for Von's freedom and keeping his name alive. However, Von's sister would also tweet that Von told her that when he gets out of jail, he's just planning on killing more people. And ultimately, none of the more serious charges would even stick to Von and he would eventually end up being released back onto the streets of Oblock, where he would, as expected, immediately get back to doing what he loved, drilling, and then tweeting about it. Twisted T is a refresh. Hey, hey, I ain't gonna lie, man, I ain't gonna lie. Hey, Vaughn wanted, wanted this shit out, man. He, he wanted this shit out, I ain't gonna lie. He wanted it out, because... This shit, like, from 
he got tweets all the way from 2012. Vaughn was still doing this shit in 2021. Tweet, I mean, 2020. And up till he died, he was still doing the same behaviors as these tweets are. They're doing that. But nobody, but no, no, Dirk ain't create Vine, man. Dirk ain't created, Dirk ain't created no motherfucking Vine, bro. Vine is Vine is beyond Dirk, bro. Don't never compare Vine to Dirk. I get pissed off at you for that, uh, Cougly. You can't compare Vine to Dirk, man. Vine the leader. All them niggas scared of Vine, bro. Like you want to keep it real, bro. You can't hey, don't disrespect King Vine like that, bro. Like if you if you want me to be honest, don't disrespect him like that, bro. Money don't mean shit, man. Vaughn could go everywhere. Dirk, money don't mean shit, bro. Hard ice it don't mean shit when 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 you a serial killer, right? <laughs> we back on y'all. Sister would announce from his Twitter account on February the eleventh, twenty fourteen, that he would be home from jail tomorrow. With footage of Vaughn cutting off his ankle monitor and throwing up gang signs circulating online after his release. When he got back out, he would be back on the streets and involving himself in gang politics once again. His first tweet out was dissing the ops, of course. He would also openly wonder where T-Roy went, as apparently his partner in crime had ended up in jail himself during this time. Also upon his release, Vaughn would also tweet at famous names in the Chicago drill scene, like Boss Top, Lil Reese, Chief Keith, E-Day, Rondo No. 9, and Capo. He would then go on to diss two people that he allegedly killed, Modell and Crack, but at least initially, it didn't appear that Vaughn was able to commit any more acts of violence, because apparently, Following his release, he would wind up on house arrest for a short period. But that didn't stop him from posting pictures of himself at home, dissing Tuka with a gun sticking out of his pocket. Pictures of Vaughn with famous BD hitters like T-Roy and D-Rose would circulate around this time, with the likes of Chief Keith even reposting them as a sign of respect for the most feared local shooters. With Vaughn also sharing pictures of his crew to Twitter openly, with the caption simply Hey man, hey, I ain't gonna lie man, this shit making me hot and sweating and everything man. This nigga say he trying to catch up to T-Roy on the bodies. You hear me? Like he having a race for this shit. I mean, I did look at the definition of a serial killer, man. And so far, man, <laughs> hey, it's looking like one, man. You know, hey, but if it look like a duck, it quack like a duck, hey, sometimes it may be a duck. You heard that before? Hey, he did his homework. Shout out Cat 1500, man. Hey, we're going to keep on continuing this video. But yeah, hey. These are all the signs, man. You know, you start off killing a snake, garden snakes, and then you start off torturing cats and shit and dogs. You know what I'm talking about? Setting them on fire. And then you get to the real skill of a human. Ask the serial killer who they started killing first. I bet you they're going to tell you animals and shit. Cats and shit. gang members. Vaughn would also tweet about it being a very scary year for the Ops, even tweeting disrespectful collages featuring photographs of rivals who had been killed recently. Vaughn didn't care one bit what he was posting on Twitter, and honestly, it didn't seem like the police cared either. Vaughn tweeted openly that he will kill someone on St. Lawrence, promising to shoot Ops in the face and kill them fast, dropping mocking tweets about people he had allegedly killed like Modell. He would pledge to drop even more bodies, even tweeting that he was shooting as soon as he got off house arrest, and tweeting that he just got a new gun and he wanted to do a drive-by with it. Now, on March the 25th, 2014, GD rapper Lil Mark, associated with a crew called 051, would drop a song called No Competition. This would be a remix of Black Disciple rappers Lil Durk and Lil Reese's 2013 song Competition. Lil Mark would essentially use Lil Durk's beat to diss him and his OTF crew from Lamron. But it wasn't just Dirk that was getting dissed. Lil Mark would diss numerous people associated with the Black Disciples, including people from both O Block and an affiliated crew of BDs known as 600. Lil Mark's song would mock O.D. Perry and Jay Money and see him rapping openly that he is a Black Disciple killer, as well as proudly repping his affiliations to his gang set 051 Young Money. This song made Lil Mark a huge target for both O Block and 600. And around this period, King Von would frequently tweet that he was in traffic, riding around the city, armed, and looking for ops to kill. On March the 28th, 2014, Von would tweet that he was in traffic, tagging D-Rose, an infamous shooter from the O-Block affiliated set 600, with D-Rose himself tweeting that the cops hate to see Von, T-Roy, and him all together. Von would tweet gunshot emojis around 10 a.m. on the 28th of March 2014. And only a few hours later, that very same day, around 1.30 p.m., it's believed that a large group of gang members were riding around in a silver minivan with Florida license plates, most likely a stolen car. 
Meanwhile, a 20-year-old Mark Campbell, aka Lil Mark, was at a bus stop on the 300 block of East 51st Street. It's believed that that minivan pulled up and a masked man jumped out, shooting Lil Mark in the head, with Mark ultimately being pronounced dead at the scene only minutes later at 1.41pm, and that minivan connected to the shooting being found in flames at 6.30pm that very night. It's widely believed that D. Rose was the shooter, with King Von being present for this murder. D. Rose even posted a clip to social media of him and his friends returning to the scene of the crime and filming, where King Von can allegedly be heard in the background of the car. Hey, took off 51st! Damn, body down. Oh, that's what Man, oh man, man, what can I say, man? Hey, look. Hey, look, man. Long live Lil Mark. Long live Lil Mark. Long live all these guys, man. But the behavior is behavior, bro. This shit self-incriminating. This man, look, they at the crime scene, bro. Why is his body still on the ground, bro? On the air thing, these niggas pull up to the crime. What do you call that? I'm just saying, what do you call that, bro? Like, hey, look, if I did some shit in life, I ain't going back to no crime scene, bro, and ride around to make sure you gone or none of that. I could see that about that shit on legal help, the news, or or something like that. You know what I'm talking about? Like, I mean, what do you call it, man? Let's keep it real, man. Shout out to Trap Lord Ross. This is news. Smash that like button. Join the membership. We're doing the Trap Lord Ross um, reaction video, man. He doing it on Vine, man. So far, Vine got um, six bodies so far. He got six bodies. You know what I'm saying? Niggas going back to crime scene. Niggas tweeting. You know what I'm talking about? Like this, this ain't just no tweets as proof. This, this them in a car. This them in a car going there. You could tell who it is by their voices. We they they drill entrepreneurs. You know what I'm saying? Like that shit crazy. They going back to the scene. I ain't never see that video. That's some sick shit, bro. And then the one in the back seat, they like, damn, Joe, man, down. They sound sad about the shit. Like they sound sick to the stomach that it's a it's a body right there. It's a commercial break, y'all. It's a commercial break, man. Smash that like button for me, y'all. Smash that like button. Make sure y'all join the membership. If you want to donate to the channel, man, money sign I M A N I three eight three seven. We appreciate all y'all uh support, man. Shout out my boy C Hood, all my moderators. Shout out to all y'all, man. Let's get it. Body down, 51st gang. Man, that D Rose would tweet, call him, never heard of him, with a laughing face just 36 minutes after the killer. King Von would tweet, just 42 minutes after the shooting, die why, with a bunch of laughing faces. With this being a sign of disrespect to Lil Mark's gang 051 Young Money. That tweet was then followed by Von saying 051 better keep their head up with a bunch of laughing emojis. Then he says he lives for this, F the Ops. And just in case there was any doubt about King Von being present for that murder, he would also reply to somebody on Twitter discussing Lil Mark, saying outright he just saw the murder, with King Von going on to tweet the other O Block affiliates that they would be celebrating that night. Von was speaking so recklessly on Twitter, his sister would even tell him to go in the house, with the defiant Von replying to her with gunshot and demon emojis, then tweeting that Lil Mark's death was getting him attention from women even going as far to say that Lil Mark's pregnant girlfriend might have cheated on him. Followed by another tweet a few days later, where Von claimed that he leaves people dead at the bus stop just like Tuka. A tweet that's even more disrespectful when you learn that Lil Mark was actually Tuka's older brother. D Rose would also tweet the day after the murder, saying you ain't gotta ask who shot him, indicating that he was indeed the shooter of Lil Mark, as well as proudly saying that he was smoking on Marco. But Von and D Rose weren't the only ones celebrating the death of Lil Mark, because Lil Durk, the original subject of Lil Mark's diss song, No Competition, released just three days before he was killed, would end up making a trip to the very bus stop where Mark was gunned down, with Dirk telling his followers that this was a very special place. Hey, this, this, hey, hey, hey this bus stop right here, though, this, this, this is a real famous place, yeah? This is a real famous place, baby. Hey, this bus stop, this is a real famous place, baby. Hey, look. Ain't this the same nigga who be talking about the bloggers and they whining and shit? The bloggers, why y'all always saying my name in y'all mouth? This nigga going to bus stop to where this man dead at and getting on that. I mean, they was kids too. I mean, they weren't kids. They was grown. They weren't kids at this time, man. They they was grown. Uh, Lil Dirk and them, they, they had to be like 18 at this time, bro. A uh, little Mark Dime, bro. Like, shit crazy, bro. But we're going to continue that. I'm going to give y'all my full opinion.
Because of all of the attention from rappers about this incident, Lil Nas death became news beyond the local Chicago takers, with this killing taking place during the heyday of DJ Academics' War in Chirac series, where Academics would report satirically on the Chicago drill scene and the shocking crimes going on within it. King Von himself would even go on to rap about killing people at bus stops many years later, as well as on the song Exposing Me, where he says that he is smoking Lil Mark and Tuca. And Lil Durk would go on to do the same thing, rapping in the December 2014 track War with E Day 600, also saying that he is smoking Lil Mark and Tuca. Now, it's never been definitively confirmed who killed Lil Mark, but it's widely believed that the two most likely hitters are D Rose or King Von. But whether or not King Von actually did it, he clearly got a lot of gratification from just witnessing this murder, further fueling this strange bloodlust that he was cultivating around this time. If he wasn't the one killing, then he would at least want a front row seat and an opportunity to tweet about it. However, it would be the next murder that would seemingly be Vaughn's most proud moment in the streets, because he would end up finally catching somebody who he had wanted to get for years, leaving clues on Twitter all the way up to the killing, and then, in an insanely twisted turn, not only would Vaughn get away with the murder, but he would go on to appear in a documentary interview about the victim without anybody even working out that the killer that they were looking for was sitting right in front of the camera. Hey, y'all smash that like button. Smash that like button, y'all. Smash that like button. We finna get into it, man. He talking about K.I. He can only be talking about K.I. Because he's saying that a person that Vaughn always wanted. And I was back then, them tweets was going off between them two. They was they was incriminating themselves. And then by me being around, you know, you could try to get him some advice and be like, hey, bro, that hey, hey, stop incriminating yourself. You're gonna go to jail for that shit. Oh man, fuck them. They they can't do nothing to us, you know. That's how they thought, bro. So hey, believe me, I try to tell them, bro. I try to tell them stop claiming bodies and all that shit, bro. But they chose to do that. At least the people who I've been around. If I heard their name was hot because they was bragging on shit, I did try to tell them, like, man, you don't want to be claiming OD, shit like that. And they chose to do that shit. So, you know, even to bring up K.I., though, man, we're going to listen to this story and see if it doesn't match mine or it doesn't match dudes. Seventeen-year-old gangster disciple Ja'Kyra Barnes, aka K.I., was a legendary figure in Chicago gang history, with the Chicago Sun-Times describing her in a prominent feature as a prolific female assassin in the Chicago gang war. K.I. has been described as the real-life Snoop from The Wire, a reference to the masculine female killer from HBO's crime drama. K.I. herself had been close with Tuca growing up, and her rumoured involvement in the killing of O.D. Perry in retaliation would make her feud with O'Block deeply personal. No doubt, King Von was obsessed with K.I. Von and K.I. would have extensive back and forths on Twitter, with it being unclear whether he was trying to date her or kill her. Their first interaction occurred on September the 25th, 2012, when Von would tweet claiming to have beaten up an odd girl on the train, with K.I. replying to this saying their arm, ear and face were injured, but she's not bothered because her gun will put a hole in her ops faces. With the tweet the following day indicating that she had perhaps shot at Von or somebody that he knows. They would go on to have a back and forth with Von asking K.I. if she's a gangster or a bitch, with K.I. indicating <laughs> that she is indeed a real gangster. Von would go on to reply to her post shouting out her gang, asking her why he never sees her when he spins the block. With hey, I got one question. I, I just want to say one thing, man. I know if we were seeing this shit, I know the police seeing this shit. You hear me? All these incriminating ass tweets. Hey, look, so when you ask Trisha's news, oh, man, they don't give a fuck. They, they just starring shit. The bloggers doing this, man. Hey, look, bro, look, they been doing this shit. They been, they been incriminating themselves. They been woofing. They been not listening. And that's why a lot of them not here today on their thing. So I'm going to say one more time on their thing. Don't accuse, don't blame Trenches News for shit on their thing. These people, these people been doing this shit since 2011, bro. Tweets on their thing, bro. You might want to holler at their parents, bro, and study hollering at Trenches News or anybody else. Go and talk to their motherfucking parents, bro, on some real shit. Show their parents this video. K.I. replying that Von can die just like White White, with Von saying she better kill him because he will kill her, and she doesn't have the good aim like he does. That same day, K.I. would tell her followers to retweet if they think she looks good. King Von retweeted it. K.I. would tweet saying that she'd beaten up someone from Oblock, and that they should go and tell Von that she's tough. This would prompt a reply from Von, where he would say he can tell that she's tough, and jokingly asking her if she's looking for a boyfriend, as well as expressing doubt that she had even beat up his friend. 
with her replying saying she caught an Oblock member on the train who had denied being from there when beaten up, with King Von's sister chiming in claiming to have been there too, and Ki saying that her victim didn't even punch her back. All this provoked a sarcastic reply from Von, where he said that he thinks he was falling in love with this fighting female. Von would later post treats where he said that he's gonna treat her right. Hey y'all, hey, hold on, I gotta say something about this shit, man. <laughs> I got to say something about this shit, man, on that thing, bro. I hope I hope Vaughn wasn't looking at Cleo offset it off, man. Hell no, man. Hey, hey, look, man. Kaya dress, I mean, um, K.I. dressed like, she dressed like a nigga, bro. So if he, if he talking about he want to hit and all that shit, bro, his ass foul, bro. Like, no disrespect to K.I., bro, but that's like some gay shit, bro. Like, for real, bro. It's like, you, you could, if you can hit her, you can fuck a nigga, bro. But I understand, you know, as a serial killer, you got to wheel them in. You know what I'm talking about? If a duck if a duck will pull a truck, then hook it up. You heard me? If she becomes his wifey, and later beginning to regularly refer to her as wifey. When K.I. replied to Von, Von would say that he has her on his mind a lot and that he misses her, even telling his sister that he wanted to marry K.I. Now, many years later, somebody on 4chan would claim to have hacked K.I.'s private DMs on Twitter and revealing that around this time, Von had DM'd K.I., asking her if she wanted to hook up, or more specifically saying he wants to nail her. She would reply saying she's not interested. Hey, he said he want to nail her, man. Hey, hey, don't, hey, don't think, don't think with your dick, man. Think with your mind, man. To which Von replies, when all of this is over, he will have her. More alleged tweets would see K.I. asking Von straight up if Oblock are plotting to kill her. To which Von replies, he's not going to lie, there are people looking to kill her. But Von would say he doesn't think he can kill her because he thinks she seems cool as hell, even having the nerve to ask her when she's going to stop gangbanging. K.I. would reply saying she's not going to stop, calling King Von a goofy and asking him when he's going to stop. Von would laugh and tell her that he's gangbanging until he dies and that he will never lose or quit, with K.I. ultimately agreeing with this and saying that she's planning the same thing, before mocking Von, saying he must feel really threatened by her, and questioning if he really thinks they can kill her. And Von replies, saying that they're trying to kill anyone, they're not just desperate for her specifically, before revealing that he had apparently had his gun on him when he beat her up on the train, but saying he didn't kill her because the police were there, along with a woman from his block, with Von saying that if he really wanted to kill her, he would have took his chances and shot her in the train or the street. In response to this, K.I. would reply, come and get it because she's ready to go to war with anyone. With Von clapping back, questioning why she takes things so seriously. After this alleged private exchange, Von would reply to a public tweet of hers dissing O.D. Perry, and reminding her that he beat her up, even saying that he wishes he'd spat on her afterwards. Now, Von began to use K.I. pretty much for entertainment, beefing her on Twitter whenever he was bored, but K.I. would be looking for Von in real life, however. Von would tweet that he has his ops scared at the corner store, and K.I. would reply, saying that she's on the way, looking for him. Also tweeting asking where he is, with Von replying sarcastically, telling her to be safe in the streets. More alleged leaked DMs between K.I. and Von would merge, with K.I. asking Von where he was, with the two of them seemingly arranging a shootout with K. Hey, I ain't gonna lie, man. All these niggas on the internet in 2023 time about they like that shit. It sounds like these two motherfuckers were chasing each other the whole time. On their thing, what was y'all at? Y'all gonna have to show us some video cameras that y'all was out that slide, man, because it sounds like these two was the main ones, man. I'm gonna keep it going, though. Even asking if T-Roy can come too. K.I. later claimed to have walked through O'Block and not seen a soul, with Von saying that they're too busy to have a shootout right now. Von would later allegedly DM K.I., telling her to call him when she's ready to put a dress on and let her hair down. They'd keep going back and forth on Twitter publicly, building up this insane public history. K.I. tweeted that she was going to the store, and Von would warn her not to. Von would tweet reminding her that he had beaten her up on the train, with her saying that he's been hiding ever since. Von would clap back, asking when she's coming back to his block for a date, and K.I. would then remind Von of all the times that people from her These motherfuckers talking to each other like... <laughs> hey, they talking to each other like they best friends or some shit, man. Like, well, I, this shit weird to me. I ain't gonna lie to you, bro. I'm not finna get in no nigga inbox, bro, and be going back and forth with him for three or four years until I catch him, bro. Like, that's all evidence. And then how the fuck did he get all these tweets? Did the parents sell the, 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 the inbox? Did the parents, did somebody mama sell a DM? I too. And she would tweet that she wants to see King Von face to face. Von would reply, she really doesn't. One tweet would see Von say that he'd spent all day trying to get K.I. on the phone and that her voice sounded sexy. Even after Von went to jail in 2013, Von's sister would tweet at K.I. 
saying that Von had asked her to go and visit him in jail, with Von's sister later suggesting that she had even had a fist fight with K.I. and saying that she will see her on 63rd, perhaps for another fight. When Von was released from jail in 2014, he would tweet at K.I. and ask if she missed him, with her replying, asking when they're meeting up, and adding four gun emojis, with Von expressing disappointment that K.I. didn't come and see him in jail like he'd asked. Now, bear in mind, tweeting at K.I. was one of the first things that Von did upon getting out of jail. He tweeted her twice before he had tweeted at Chief Keith or any of his actual friends from Oblock. He was obsessed, but K.I. would continue to mock Von, asking him how it felt for his friends to die while he was in jail, even retweeting Von's own tweet saying rest in peace Jay Money and going on to insult him in a tweet of her own. This was a reference to Von's friend Jay Money from Oblock, who had been killed in September 2013 whilst he was in jail, with Von retaliating, saying rest in piss to Crack and Modell, with Von even later tweeting that he can't be mad at women unless they're odds, in which case they can die. And another tweet saying how desperate he was to catch a female op. Von and K.I. would tweet at each other much less in 2014, perhaps because Von was looking to reduce the paper trail leading to him if K.I. wound up dead. But in the days following Little Mark's death in April 2014, Von would release some brazen tweets. On the 1st of April, he would tell a friend that he would never start rapping and that he prefers killing ops, and tweeting that he had bodies on his gun. On the 6th of April, K.I. would tweet saying, people won't get the picture until you put them in the frame, along with a gun emoji. That same day, Von would tweet, saying if you're not where I'm from, you will get killed. That was followed the next day by Von tweeting that he was always looking for a woman and he can't find her, and saying he will stop looking and let her look for him. He would then go- Hey man, hey look man. Hey, this nigga Von, sick to the motherfucker man. Hey look, I, hey, I was in the midst of this shit, like in the midst of the drill scene and all that around, but I, hey, I wasn't on Twitter, bro. I ain't never had no Twitter. I know somebody said that Oh man, Swiper, you had disrespect to Platoon. Hey, look, bro. I, hey, Platoon, Grandma, Mama Duke, Granny Duke, Mama uh, Money Duke, Grandma, all them, bro. They love me, bro. I, I ain't never had no Twitter. But that motherfucker Vaughn sick, man. He a sick motherfucker, bro. Just off his tweets, he's sick. Whether he did that shit or not, man, it's some sick ass shit, bro. If you if you a law abiding citizen or you the jury, man, your ass going to jail for all that shit, bro. I want to tweet on the 10th of April there's some women he would do anything for, telling her to just hit his line. That would be followed by another tweet, saying if a girl leaves him, then she's leaving the best, with it unclear if he's talking about her leaving him or her leaving this earth. That was followed by more tweets, where Von would say, if a girl is with the ops, then she's getting shot, and that he's not playing with op girls this summer, and they should watch out. In the early hours of the next morning, K.I. would make the ominous tweet, in the end, we die as well as tweeting her apparent location just off 63rd. Later that afternoon, K.I. would be standing on a nearby porch in the 6400 block of South Everhart Avenue, only a three minute walk towards Oblock from the location that she had tweeted she was at earlier that day. And that was the day that King Von would allegedly find that woman that he had been looking for all this time, as K.I. would indeed be gunned down on April the 11th, 2014. The murder report on K.I.'s death would feature a witness describing the shooter who hopped out of a car, catching K.I. and another man who were about to shoot dice. They would run into a gangway, but the shooter kept firing, apparently even shouting, yeah, bitch ass, n-words, as he fired the handgun at K.I. multiple times. She would be shot nine times and declared dead just two hours later. For Chantel Brown, the statistics are more than just numbers. With the and they love him, before tweeting, mad that nobody misses him and this was followed by people confirming that K.I. had been killed. Oblock veteran Jay Hood would reveal in a Cam Capone interview many years later that Von came back to Oblock and told him what he'd done immediately after the murder. But he literally say just like this, we, I'm look Yo ass heard through the grapevine, right? He said it just like that. Man, you better get your huh? air with scissor hands looking ass, boy. Your lips crusty, boy. His name's Jamisha. Jamika, you better get your, yeah, yeah, get your, he told me this and he told me that. That man ain't tell you nothing. You heard the story on my page and you put two and two together. Nigga, Pastor J, uh, woo, uh, Pastor J, uh, woo. Von told me to turn around uh, and then he told me to turn around again. Uh, and then Von ran in the building and then I ran behind him. And then he said, I kill K.I. He said, I kill K.I. He ain't tell you shit, nigga. Shut up. On that thing. Back to the motherfucking script. Post to Von 
who replied saying, when your cravings call, Shout out my boy C Hood, man. Shout out to the whole mob squad, man. Shout out to the whole mob squad, man. Shout out King Almighty. Shout out Ray Duck, Big Boss Rob, uh, Juice Crew, uh, Sexy Lexi, Kaya Baby. Shout out NC. Shout out that Beezy, man. Shout out Drill the Mob, Hustle Man, man. Shout out my whole squad. We on the road to 100K. Shout out Trap Lua Ross, y'all. We on this King Von thing, man. Let's get it. Once again, deliver a flurry of activity on Twitter, tweeting that his ops don't scare him and that the whole gang war is funny to him. He would say that he's lost a lot of friends, so his enemies must die in retaliation. Bob would also tweet saying that people wouldn't believe the things that he does in the streets and saying that he will never tell. Von would even copy KI's earlier tweet from the week before her murder about people not getting the picture until you put them in the frame, as well as tweeting at her saying he misses his old girl. Von was clearly in a celebratory mood following the murder of KI, and he would go on to make post after post referencing the ongoing gang war, posting tributes to T-Roy, telling his incarcerated friend that he was going crazy on the streets while he was locked up. Von was seemingly proud of himself for all he was achieving in the streets at this point. He would seemingly update his body count to six, openly tweeting, homicide in the air, and that he made six people extinct for playing hard. Von would even post his own mugshot, saying they should have never freed him. But hey, hey, look, I, hey, look. Hey, 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 look. I, 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 I ain't trying to say that he did. He got six of them, but look, though. <laughs> If he's saying that he got six of them, man, the serial killer is more than four bodies, man. So um, I guess he is a serial. Let's keep going, though. I mean, he qualified to be a serial. I ain't saying he no serial, um, Bayola, whatever your name is, Baylo. I don't want to fight you. I don't want to do nothing, Baylo. I'm just reacting to a video like I'm, I'm a blogger, you know? Yeah, yeah, you know? The menace. He tweeted that he put people's brains in their lap and asked his followers if they would still be there for him when he gets 100 years in jail. Von would suggest that he is only competing in kill counts with T-Roy, suggesting that those two were the most deadly people in the streets at this time. And he would claim to wake up in the morning thinking of nothing but killing people. Other rappers and well-known figures around Chicago Drill would continue to tweet congratulating King Von after this murder. People like Lil Reese, and Boss Top, and Von would also tweet on April the 28th that there's only two places for a man like him, presumably jail or hell. Clearly, he must have had an inkling, as he would end up being picked up in connection to the murder the following day, on the 29th of April. But Vaughn would never be formally charged with K.I.'s murder. He would deny even knowing her, and would initially offer to do a polygraph test, as well as providing a loose alibi, relying on a woman claiming that she had been with him the entire day of the murder. <laughs> Combine that with the fact that Vaughn had apparently checked in with his parole officer just an hour before the murder worked in his favour despite the crime scene being only 35 minutes from the parole office, meaning that Vaughn had over 25 minutes spare to get there and kill K.I. immediately after signing in with his P.O. As a result of these slick maneuvers, Vaughn would indeed be released the next day and face no further consequences in this situation. And he would tweet that he beat that case like Rocky and that he was in a good mood, showing love to everyone but the odds. That was followed by him tweeting laughing faces and saying that he was grateful to be free and that he's too real. A few days later, Vaughn would be tweeting that he beats bodies and that he doesn't plan on going to prison, as well as seemingly referencing K.I.'s resemblance to Snoop from The Wire and calling her a dead op. Years later, Von would even go on to brag about killing K.I. on songs after he started rapping, famously saying on the track War With Us that he put a pretty op a bitch in the morgue, you can call her drop dead gorgeous, as well as saying that he keeps a strap like K.I. on the song GTA. For years following this murder, people, including myself, speculated on whether King Von had killed K.I., or whether it was the work of fellow O-Block hitter Big A, who reportedly went by the nickname ASCII, or Ask K.I., after her death, suggesting that he had something to do with her killing. But in lyrics to King Von's leaked song Wait, he seemingly rapped about the day that he caught K.I., with lyrics a lot of people believe would allude to Von jumping out of the car and chasing K.I. down the alley, with Big A being the driver. And Von would also rap on the song Cousins that he kills women and men and can't tell the difference. But it wasn't just Von. Lil Durk would also rap in December of 2014, the year that K.I. was killed, on the song War with E-Day, seemingly suggesting that he had owned a gun that was used in K.I.'s murder. Now, rapping about someone that you killed is one thing, but King Von actually went on to do one of the most psychopathic things I have ever seen. Because on May the 23rd, 2019, a documentary about K.I. would air on a and &E. Hey, y'all, hey, look. Hey, look, I ain't gonna need a lot of y'all. I ain't gonna need a whole none of y'all, right? Hey, smash that like button. Smash that like button. It's 1,041 people in here. Smash that like button.
Hey, this Pacific documentary, man, pissed me the fuck off. I was in jail when this shit came out, right? And I, and, and look, when I cut it on, right, they like, Scud, it's on, it's on, right? So I'm, I'm, I'm downstairs and shit. Um, I'm downstairs. I'm um, doing something, bro. Now we get our burritos. Can't get right, uncle. Can't get right, uncle was in the jail with me. Can't get right, um, his uncle. He was he was on our deck too. So they like it's coming back on. It's coming back on. So soon I run the room, man. The first person I seen was Vaughn, bro. I'm like, the fuck is he doing on her documentary? You know, if you know what you know in the streets, right? If you know what you knowing by me knowing what I know, I'm like, what the fuck he was doing on his do uh, documentary? Like, is this a fucking game? Is this a dream or something? Like, this this a fucking nightmare all over again. You hear me? But we're going to keep on going on, man. Titled Secret Life of a Gang Girl. This piece goes in depth into the life of K.I., exploring her motivations to become a gang member despite being a petite young woman, as well as interviewing some of the people that knew her during this time. And that documentary about K.I. would interview none other than King Von, who was featured prominently in the documentary. And if you ask me, he was just straight up trolling the TV crew, who clearly hadn't done their homework. Vaughn would appear in the show, portraying himself as having been an infatuated admirer, pursuing K.I. for nothing but romantic reasons. And the fact that the film crew didn't even have an inkling that Vaughn was responsible is just crazy to me. And it's not like the info that he killed K.I. wasn't already circulating out there at this point. Because while Vaughn is in jail for his next murder in 2016, word of his story as a shooter in the Chicago gang war would spread on the edgy message board 4chan, where a gang-obsessed 4chan member would claim to have accessed K.I.'s private DMs, exposing those private messages which we already saw between King Von and K.I. all the way back in 2012, with this deranged 4chan user even replying to friends of K.I. from her account who had continued to DM her after her death looking for closure, with that 4chan hacker writing a lengthy post claiming to have been told by a friend of K.I.'s in the DMs that they believe King Von was her killer. Bear in mind, this information was floating around all the way back in 2016, two years after the murder, and three years before the documentary. However, eventually, a whole year after Von's death, in 2021, the Chicago police would release documents revealing that they believed King Von himself to be K.I.'s killer, with apparently multiple witnesses pinning Von as the shooter. But unfortunately, the state decided not to prosecute, stating that the case simply wouldn't meet. Okay, it says, it says multiple witnesses said that King Von did it, man. So the only people who could have said did it was the motherfuckers who was right there who he attacked. You know what I'm talking about? Because my name been in it and I wasn't in it. No, on that thing. You see, I wasn't there. Yeah, yeah, but yeah, he right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Fully. The burden of proof to secure a conviction. So King Von would be released back on the streets after having allegedly killed the girl he had seemingly spent years hunting down. But only a month and a half later, Von would go on to catch yet another murder which would finally land him in jail, and just briefly putting a stop to his serialized kit. It could take months to finally see it. Yeah, this motherfucker, um, so far, man. <laughs> hey, Ted Bundy, motherfucker, um, <laughs> um, all the rest of them motherfucker, John Wayne, God damn it! come on, come on now. Come on, man, come on now. Now, y'all name some more motherfuckers. I named Ted Bundy and John Wayne. Name, name a couple more motherfuckers. The B2K killer, the the um Smiley, what's the name? What's the nigga in Chicago right now? Killing the dudes. The Smiley face killer, Jeffrey Dahmer. That motherfucker, one of them, man. I ain't gonna lie, man. This nigga on A and E. This nigga on A and E, and they let him on that. Hey, his mama and them, his mama and them, they shouldn't be trying to come at trenches news. They need to be suing A and E for defamation of character. Fucking with their minds and everything, bro. They didn't let a motherfucker on A and E. Y'all worry about trenching news, you two, but this motherfucker on they A and E laughing. But did anybody complain about that? Hell no, nah, y'all watched it. You motherfuckers, damn, they probably smashed the like button on A and E. We gonna keep it going though, y'all. Be a therapist when you go the traditional. Child trap Laura Ross, man. He ain't did nothing wrong. You come to Chicago, you come to Chicago, trap Laura Ross. Hey, I'll ride you around, man. My wife and them got bulletproof cars, man. We'll ride you around. You you in the house with us. Them motherfuckers shoot a car at us all day. It's a ting, the ting, the ting, 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 ting. What do you, you want to go and see? The CSI with Trap Lord? 
Where you want to go and see? You want to go and ride through no limit? We in bulletproof on everything. When I'm in the city, we're going to push that bulletproof lock through it. You hear me? After being questioned about the KI murder and being released with no consequences, King Von felt invincible. The month is May 2014, and Von had seemingly killed a total of six people at this point. As usual, he'd be on Twitter non-stop, hinting at his actions in the streets, asking God for forgiveness for killing his ops, and saying that he shoots first and asks questions later. He would tweet that he's in a different league when it comes to killing, and others need to catch up, and telling the world that he's always armed and ready for his ops. Clearly Vaughn was active in the streets, as well as on Twitter, claiming to be driving through his ops area literally as he was tweeting, and saying that he has an itchy trigger finger. Vaughn would claim that anybody can get smoked for the right price or cause, warning his ops not to come near him or he will shoot. Vaughn would claim to never be putting his gun down because too many people have died in the gang war, taunting his ops, saying he knows that they want him, but it's not his time to die. Vaughn would even repost a viral clip from Worldstar titled When Keeping It Real Goes Wrong, a video apparently showing a group of people filming themselves going to Chief Keith's neighborhood and getting shot at, a clip that people would later claim was actually King Von doing the shooting. I mean, just imagine having the balls to shoot at people and then retweet the Worldstar video of you shooting at them. The same day as this, Vaughn would claim that he's buying guns with 100 round magazines and wondering who he's going to shoot as well as saying that he'd been gangbanging all day, and now he's tired out. The following day, Von would tweet saying that others wouldn't do half of the stuff that he's done and plans to do in the streets, and Von would say that he plans to keep scoring until he wins. Only two days after that, Von would find himself attempting to score again. On the 29th of May, 2014, an afternoon party would be going on at 5722 South LaSalle Street. Von would attend this party where he spotted two members from the rival gang. At this point, the mother of the person whose birthday party it was apparently told Von not to start trouble in her house, with Von saying that he wouldn't and leave it. Von would leave the party and go and get a friend, Big Mike, apparently telling another person who was still at the party on the phone that he was coming back and that they should take the children inside. Von and Big Mike would return to that party, parking down the street and approaching a group of three men outside the house, opening fire. Three of those men would be hit by gunshots, whilst Von chased them, allegedly yelling, why are you running? And when the shooting stopped, a 19-year-old man by the name of Malcolm Stuckey would be declared dead with a gunshot wound to the head. The Chicago police would respond to the shooting at 6.10 p.m., arriving on the scene where police were pictured securing the location around Malcolm's body. Apparently, Vaughn was really trying to kill two rival gang members that he saw at the party, ultimately hitting three people, but only killing Malcolm, who allegedly wasn't the intended target or even involved in the gang war. Perhaps this is why we never hear King Von in his career disrespecting or saying that he's smoking Malcolm like he did to many of the other people that he was rumored to have killed. But there would still be hints at his involvement, because while Malcolm had been laying in the street with a bullet in his head for several hours, only 12 minutes before he'd officially be pronounced dead, Von would tweet saying that he has some issues, but he cannot tell a soul about them. Meanwhile, Boss Top from Oblock would tweet that Von is the guy who sits people down if they run up. Now, it would take nearly two months for the authorities to connect Von to this murder, and during this time, he would continue to be prolific posting on Twitter. He would tweet that he was on the block with his gun in the early hours of the morning, just the day after the murder of Malcolm, and tweeting that all of the things that people are hearing about are him. He's the one responsible. He would tweet saying that he... Hey. Hey, man. Hey, look, I ain't gonna need a lot, bro. Hey, I ain't gonna need a lot, man. This motherfucker a psycho, man. That's some psycho shit. Hey, look, though. Vaughn tweeted himself. He said, man, everything that I'm saying, that I, I'm about that shit. So, I mean, we can't argue. What, we gonna argue with him and say he capping? Can't nobody say Vaughn cap. Killed so. We get a lot of questions about whether our app is actually free to use. Yes, our app is free to use, and I'm going to prove it to you. The app is free to download from the App Store. Once you're in the Giving Me app, you can choose from thousands of free This is the guy who lays people down. Boss Top always in some shit, ain't he? Ain't that's the ain't that's the boss top say yeah 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 get them over there. I know what's going on. Ain't that the same dude boss top in the tweet time about some yeah bond and sit him down and put him down and uh, he always in the middle of some shit. Captain 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 Talk um uh, Captain Top. Smash that like button, y'all. Smash that like button. Don't fuck around and play me. Smash that like button. 
because their most fearless shooter was in jail that so many people ended up passing while he was gone. Vaughn was particularly hurt by the killing of T-Roy, his right-hand man. And after T-Roy was killed, a new set of gangsters would form in Oblot who went by the name Get Back Gang. This was a hardened crew of shooters whose sole focus was to get revenge or get back for the murder of T-Roy and other beloved Oblock natives who had been killed while Vaughn was in jail. Another one of these fallen Oblock affiliates was Chino, who was shot dead on the 17th of July 2016. Another, Big A, was gunned down in a restaurant near Oblock on the 4th of December 2016. Get Back Gang would be on a killing spree trying to avenge their fallen friends, looking to kill anyone who played a role in their demise. Poppy, believed to have been involved in hits against Oblock, would be gunned down at work on the 16th of June 2017, allegedly being shot in the head by an Oblock member called Heck, who would go on to be known by the nickname HK or Headshot King. HK was T-Roy's brother and would reportedly avenge him, with T-Roy's alleged killer TB or Terry Barry being shot dead on the 26th of December 2017. However, HK himself would end up being killed in Oblock too, just before Vaughn got out of jail on the 24th of November 2017. Another person who seemingly lost their life to get back Gang's revenge campaign during this time would be FBG Brick, FBG Duck's brother, rumoured to have played a role in giving up T-Roy's location to the Ops the day he was killed, with Brick and his friend Kobe being gunned down in a Get Back Gang attack on the 17th of July 2017. In fact, many of these murders played out in 2017 whilst Vaughn was still behind bars for the murder of Malcolm Stuckey. And when Hey, man, I mind you, y'all, man, I mind you. I just want to throw this in there. All these murders is unsolved except Malcolm Stuckey, man. Wooski brother in jail for that shit. But all the rest of these murders that they talking about Vaughn did, they, they, they all unsolved. They all still unsolved on everything. Everybody, that every last motherfucker body that they said in this video is unsolved, man. But... You got the police report saying they know that Vaughn did it. So if they knew that he did it, be mad at the police, the parents, the people who want the peace to stop. You need to go and argue with the police about why the fuck they ain't been doing their job since 2012, since they've been watching these tweets and shit. Yeah. Vaughn got out. Despite becoming a rapper, spending time in Atlanta with Lil Durk, and seemingly taking a step away from the gang war, Vaughn would still seem to be looked at as a senior figure and shot caller to members of O Block and Get Back Gang. And when they killed again, King Vaughn would be on the sidelines celebrating the murder as if it was one of his own. On June the 13th, 2018, King Vaughn would tweet saying that there's a new rule. You can only diss or smoke a dead person that you yourself actually killed. Only days after that tweet, Get Back Gang would unfortunately claim another life. The next unlucky person to be killed would be a St. Lawrence native by the name of Can't Get Right, aka Man Man, real name DeAndre Wallace. On June the 15th, 2018, around 9.50 p.m., Can't Get Right is waiting for food outside of a store on 400 block of East 63rd Street. At a certain point, two people pulled up and waited outside. And when the target was spotted, those two men ran up, opening fire, killing both the target as well as an innocent bystander that was just there sweeping up outside the restaurant. And once again, the shooting. Hey, I just want to say this, man. Rest in peace to that guy, man. It was a guy who got killed with can't get right, ain't had shit to do with nothing. You hear me? His family from the Calumet building, man. He ain't had nothing to do with nothing, man. He was sweeping the parking lot, man. He had him a little job sweeping the parking lot for the for that for that um stove. And man, nigga destroyed him, man. I'm talking about did him dirty, man. Stood over him and everything, bro. Like he ain't had nothing to do with nothing. You know, it ain't even safe to have no job. He was straight innocent, bro. You hear me? Like for real, he was just sweeping, man, and got killed. and immediate aftermath were captured on CCTV footage and by witnesses in clips that are far too grisly to show you on YouTube. Both men shot in the incident were pronounced dead at the University of Chicago Hospital, with the news even later reporting on this assassination. Morning, I'm looking for the gunman who killed two men overnight. They were... Students show up here and they want to make a difference in the world. The month after the shooting at Dooski's funeral, which critically injured Wooski, King Von seemed to be worried about his reputation, tweeting that the past is always coming back to haunt him, and saying that he's not a murderer, not a rapper, not a scammer, just handsome. But also tweeting <laughs> that if you play with him on the internet... Hey man, yeah, this motherfucker's sick. I'm not a murderer. I'm not that just handsome. This motherfucker bipolar than 80 bitches, man. 
That motherfucker, he got a bipolar. One day he killed the motherfuckers and eating cereal. And then the next day, oh yeah, 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 yeah. That motherfucker, hey, yeah, 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 yeah. He's sick than a motherfucker. Shows with his fans going crazy. And he would waste no time beginning to tease new music soon after his mixtape dropped. Specifically, the first single of his next project, titled 2AM. A song where Von rapped the brazen lyric, can't put no more guns in my videos, because the ATF and DEA know they ain't props. And after this release, Von would claim to be receiving multi-million dollar record deal offers. But while Von was getting more and more famous, so too were the rumors of him being a real killer, and his incriminating lyrics weren't helping matters either. During this period, it seemed like Von would simultaneously be claiming to have really done all of these murders in his music, but then at other times, being desperately trying to convince his following that he never did anything. On his November 29th release, the song Rollin' with fellow rapper and accused double murderer YNW Melly, Von would rap that he has killed so many people they should call him Rambo, and saying, I did it, but it wasn't me, which perfectly sums up his attitude during this time, jumping on songs and saying over and over again that he really is the killer they say he is, and then jumping on Twitter to say that he would never do anything like the rumors say he did. He would tweet after this release, saying that somebody is trying to send him to jail every day. And in December, Von would appear prominently on Lil Durk's Family Over Everything compilation album for his OTF record label, with the front cover of this project ironically resembling a suspect board for a criminal investigation, with Von positioned as an underboss under Lil Durk. I honestly wouldn't be surprised if the feds just downloaded this image and added it to the case file. But a few days later... <laughs> hey, hold on, man. I ain't never seen that. I ain't never seen that what's the name, though. But... Hold on, I gotta go back to that. Hey, they had a little, they had like a little, um, like a little board, bro. It's it's like a little pyramid board. It's like Lil Dirk was at the top. It was like a only only the family volume one or something or two, and Lil Dirk was at the top, and then he had all like the underbosses and all that shit, bro. Like y'all crazy as hell, bro. They be talking all that shit, bro. Hey, look, if you a gang member. You shouldn't be on the internet, bro. If you talking about on BD, on GD, on Blackstone, on any of that, bro, you shouldn't be on the internet talking about shit on everything. That's the first problem. It's called silence and secrecy, bro. How can you be saying on BD, on GD, but then you telling about murders and robberies, bro? Like, for real. Like, like let's be real. Let's just be real now. How can you be doing it? You don't know your paperwork, the laws? Oh, I forgot. We don't go by that shit no more. Well, stop saying what you is, because you ain't never, you want never that. The very first lyric of that album would see Von admitting that the cops are onto him. By this point, Von's lyricism was the sharpest it had ever been. And he really did have a talent for using music to communicate the dark reality behind the life that he had lived. Another line on that opening track, Armed and Dangerous, really stuck out to me where Von raps that he has inflicted tragedies, massacres, and casualties on his ops, admitting that he did a lot of things to people that he can't remember, but he knows that they remember him. He would reminisce on October 2012 when he had allegedly killed numerous people, rapping that people were dying in October, and that it's the real Halloween. There was also the track Demon, where Von would open up about becoming a killer. A track that he claimed to have killed seven people, saying, bodies, I got a few. 4 plus 3, 3 plus 2. This is a line a lot of people assumed meant 7 kills and 5 assists, or killings that he was present for. But my interpretation of this would actually be that it's Von saying that he killed 7 people personally before he became a rapper, and 5 people who were killed by his crew, either while he was allegedly present, like in the case of Lil Mark, or allegedly on his orders, like would have been the case with FBG Duck. Hell, some people would even count Dooski to King Von's body count, because after all, Von would claim that he was smoking Dooski after his death, having tweeted not long before that that you can only smoke somebody if you had something to do with killing them. If you include that, that would make a full 12 bodies that King Von has been associated with over the years. Combine that with the fact that Von would end this song by boldly saying FFBG Duck, then I think it becomes pretty clear that he's trying to take responsibility for this killing. Another song on the album called The Code would see King Von rapping about splitting $100,000 with his team and being goated. A line that hits different when you know that he allegedly paid $100,000 to have Duck killed and tweeting a goat emoji immediately after the murder took place. Von would only be alive for around a week following the release of this project, but recording numerous songs and freestyles that referenced his alleged murders, like King Von's Audio Mac Bless the Booth freestyle, where he straight up rapped that he had seven bodies. On the 2nd of November, he would tweet that people want to kill him with a yawning emoji. Clearly, Von was not scared. 
In fact, one of the very last things that Vaughn did was an interview with DJ Academics, and a big part of this interview was the discussion of Vaughn's beats. Academics would press Vaughn about his earlier tweets, suggesting that Vaughn had been lying about him and FBG Duck squashing their beef, with Vaughn denying that he was lying and suggesting that somebody else had deleted their DMs. You, you know you're, you know you're uh, Duck to the makeup. His mom came out and said, you and Duck Gang, yeah. how you gonna tell, see, this, see this, 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 this ain't right. His mom was not there. I ain't never met his mom. I don't know his mom. You see what I'm saying? I've talked to him. You see what I'm saying? They, they, then they deleted all I, I DM so I can't show him the. I don't know why they do that. From here, a flustered King Von would try and sidestep his past beef with Duck, saying that they just went to school together. They just make it look real crazy to y'all. These are just really people we all went to school with. Nah, that's school just look crazy to me. I can't do nothing. That's, that's, that's how they make them. Like, yo. You got to understand, like you said, they right down there on the street. Yeah, Vaughn, uh, he was he trolling on that shit. He, he trolling big time, man. Him and Duck ain't squashing nothing behind no scene or none of that, bro. Duck ain't behind no scene ass nigga. Duck on if they if they would have squashed something, they both would have came out together and said it. He was trolling AK, man. But we're gonna see what else going on. We went to school that it ain't, it ain't this year, you know. And then, you know, it's just that we, we ain't cool no more. It, it, it was, you know, but it ain't that serious, like it's to the point where I right, let's now let's talk about it. It ain't that's uh, both of us rapping, we can we can figure that we need to stop this, all the violence, all the shit. That shit, that shit. We got a voice. You see what I'm saying? Like we tell Chicago fall back, tell Chicago fall back. Eventually, academics would ask Von how he felt when he heard about Duck's death, and Von would start slowly eating cereal, saying that he was hurt by Duck's death in an incredibly unconvincing manner. Were you saddened by the news that he was murdered? Man, that shit hurt. I ain't gonna sleep that night. Can't believe it. At a certain point, Von tells academics to hold on. He would then point the camera away from his face, and we would hear what sounds like Von and his friends laughing off camera. And before Von came back on camera, for a very brief moment, we got a glimpse of Von's friend from Oblock, BJ, laughing in the background. Hold on, man. BJ ass wasn't just laughing in that motherfucker police station when they tried to put that gun on him, was he? He wasn't laughing then, was he? BJ ass, hey, my gun, bring everybody up in there, ask him again. He wanted the he wanted he wanted twelve to bring everybody else back in the room with them all in one and one group and say it all over again. You see how that shit is? <laughs> I can't help but notice the fact that Von is eating cereal whilst discussing the killing of Duck. Well, you eat just this, 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 um, cereal straight out of the box, no milk? I'm a gangster. I've said it before that I believe Von was a serial killer, but honestly, he's mentioned cereal so many times during his career. It really wouldn't surprise me if this was some kind of cryptic message that he was using to signal to fans that he saw himself as a serial killer with Duck as his latest victim. He would strangely tweet about how much he loves his cereal after a series of alleged murders in 2012, even tweeting that eating cereal is the first thing he does after shooting someone. He would promote Dirk's cereal whilst they were both on the run from the Atlanta shooting at the Varsity, telling people on Twitter to buy the cereal whilst waving a clip of a gun, and regularly posting himself on social media eating cereal. And he would also be eating cereal when he told the world that he wanted to perform at FBG Duck's funeral. Yeah, cereal be busted, so. They said K Bond featuring FBG Duck. I said that's what they want to see. Huh? Stop that, man. I'll perform at his funeral. Then, when we finally saw the actual murder of FBG Duck and academics asked him about it, at that very moment, Von would decide to start eating cereal too. Maybe it's a stretch, but that day when academics called Von, he probably knew he would be asked about FBG Duck. And he made sure to have that box of cereal within arm's reach so that the whole world would see him crunching on cereal at that exact moment. Sadly for Von, soon after this interview, he would end up on the other side of the gun, getting shot himself and ultimately losing his life. But in a final twist of irony, it would turn out that despite being connected to so many murders in his home city, Von would seemingly end up losing his life in an altercation in another state and as a result of a petty rap beef that had nothing to do with his violent past in the street. Wait, 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 wait. Hey, shout out Matthew, man. Shout out Matthew, man. Shout out Matthew. Appreciate all the support, bro. 
Appreciate it. Let me go up. Let me go up where real quick. I gotta go up and see Matthew. Let me holler at Matthew real quick. Matthew with him. Shout out Matthew with him, man. Help one of the people, man. Appreciate it. All love support, bro. Hey. Vaughn, man. Vaughn. He was just something different, bro. Like he, I, I just feel like this is how I feel, bro. This is my take on it. I just feel like he expressed himself to the world. He want uh, before before the fame, he he left the world into his world, and then when he got famous, that's what fucked him up, man. That's what that's why they got a Rico right now and everything, bro. And I feel like Lil Dirk know that he messed up by signing him, but Lil Dirk seen him as a cash cow, bro. Like Lil Dirk knew. That after he dropped that song with Vaughn, he knew that Vaughn was worth some money, bro. So he, Lil Dirk probably didn't want to fuck with him on the fact that, like, on his street side. But Lil Dirk wanted to fuck with him for the simple fact that, you know, like, the man, that like, he was going to make some money, bro. He Lil Dirk thought he could change Vaughn, bro. He thought he was going to help change him. But really, Vaughn, you know, then geeked this nigga up to catch another case and all type of shit, bro. He geeked all them up. Now, when they felt like they had the dream team. They they had more money than ever, and they was still doing fuck shit. But Vaughn was something different, man. And if you describe a serial killer, if you say what a serial killer is, man, a serial killer, a person who claimed that they have more than four bodies, they kill more than four people, man. He 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 claimed the shit, bro. So I feel like nobody shouldn't be mad at Trap Laura Ross about this situation, man. Vaughn he expressed this shit in every song, every tweet. And and all, all of it, bro. Like he never let let down on this shit. So, you know, shout out to Trap Larry Ross. The 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 um that interview. I mean, that it was dope. The documentary was dope, man. All he did was he all he did was anybody else could have do. All the bloggers, anybody could have did that. Go back all the way, take all Von tweets and put their audio to it, bro. He ain't do nothing, nothing special. He just did it, bro. That's the only thing. They not lazy overseas. They watching this shit and they active. What I think it is, people be wanna, people be wanna do the shit that people doing, and they just mad because people that did it. They dreams and goals. Like, what's the difference between his documentary and your documentary? I just feel like these parents. Bro, like, y'all need to really go and check y'all self. Look in the mirror, man. Like, if you want to complain about what somebody else doing on the internet, man, look in the mirror, bro. Like, this was 2012 when there was shit happened. If your kid was still alive and your kid wasn't one of the first ones, you were supposed to got your kids out. So, really, that means that you fail as a parent. If your motherfucking kids was in the street during this time and you seeing all these people die, you should have been how let your kids, you know? Can't blame it on nobody else. That's all people do, man. And, and and mostly black people. He did it. He he they it's their fault and all that shit, bro. We gotta stop it, bro. It don't matter what race you is, bro. I ain't I ain't racist, I ain't prejudiced, or none of that. Hey, look, the man did a documentary that's public record, first of all, man. This shit public record. This shit, hey, look, if Chicago won't get on the internet and be time about this shit, that's why I'm gonna keep getting paid for it. Cause they getting on the internet and doing it anyway. So you rather me get paid for it or trap Laura Ross? Which one you want? Or both of us? I suggest both of us get paid for it. But which one you want? Because you don't want Trenches News to get paid for it, or you don't want you don't want trap Laura Ross to get paid for it. So who you want to get paid for it? You? Okay, 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 okay. I understand. But long live Vaughn, man. Long live Duck. Long live um can't get right Modell, Lil James, um Crazy James, Lil Stucky. Um, Lil Buck Buck, um, all 11 people who they said Vaughn killed, man. I don't, I don't agree that he killed all them people, man. I don't know if he killed all them people, but I don't think he killed all them people, man, who they saying he killed, man. You know, they just adding in some names, like Dirty Rail. Y'all ain't never heard of Dirty Rail tonight. Somebody sent that shit to him, Dirty Rail name. Dirty Rail is an older member from Jaro that don't even hang with kids, bro. So I, I, I don't understand that, but, you know. Long live everybody, man. Long live everybody. I'm 48 years old. My son, 26. His son, 15 months. 
the internet is the devil's playground and Vaughn played in it and on and off yes he did yes he did but long live them guys man that i mean that that's just sick though man that's just sick but if he killed 11 motherfuckers you need to be mad at CPD for not grabbing them and letting them go all the motherfucking times. He didn't got grabbed. He didn't got grabbed a million times. That's when that was your chance to jump up as a parent and be like, "Yeah, the little motherfucker y'all got in jail, and that's the one who killed my son." Y'all didn't do that. Y'all wait to trench the news, get on here and wonder, "Oh man, da, 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 da. suck it." That's all I can tell you. Shout out my boy C Hood, man, on the road to fifty k. Shout out at JP Beats, man. Shout out at Hungry Mama 773. You in the Chicago land area and you want some real good food? Holla at Hungry Mama 773, man. What else we got on the million? Um, Nene. Shout out, shout out, um, shout out Sick Life, Don Dada, man. Swipe it real with man, bro. Florida. Shout out to whole Florida, man. Appreciate all your love and support. I ain't get to see my part, but whatever I said, I meant it, okay? If whatever I said in the documentary, I meant it on that. I don't take shit back. I ain't none of their friends, man, on that thing. The closest person I'm to, into it, like, I know a lot of them. We all from the nowhere, and I know their parents, but I lived in the crib with Duck. Like, like I lived in the crib with the same crib that Duck was at every day, all day, 24 hours. I was in that crib with him, 24 hours. You know what I'm talking about? So we got a better and clear and respectable relationship. You know what I'm talking about? But everybody else, like I knew them back then. But after like about after that, I seen a couple people. Like I seen E Dog in 12, 13, 14. I was still kicking it with him going over his house. But like after I got locked up and came home, bro, I have no interest in these kids, man. I have no interest in hanging with some niggas who gonna hang outside and think about killing people. I have no personal interest. We not getting paid for it. We ain't got no bond money. We ain't got no lawyer. We ain't going to get no money when we get out. All we going to be is some real niggas who killed somebody. And I don't want to be no real nigga. And I don't want nobody saying free me. Because free is free. All he going to be saying is free. Free my homie, man. Free gang got the chain game. How you going to free me, nigga? What, you going to come in there with the key? Because if you ain't coming in there with the key to free me, nigga, don't say free me. You ain't sending no bread or nothing. Then I die. You lying on me. I, I fucking get killed. You lying on me. On him, on him, on him. Man, I see so many people lying and shit. I see so many people lying on dead people, man, on the internet, man. It's pathetic, bro. They just lying. Every sentence they lying on a dead motherfucker. Y'all know who it is. This shit ain't no secret. Come on, man. Imagine somebody lying on your brother and you right there. And you just sitting right there like a creative player, shaking your head or agreeing with this shit. Man, I'm busting the nigga here with a Louisville slugger bat. If they lie on my brother, you better not. Don't even push it on my brother on that thing. But if you do put something on my brother, you better be telling facts. Don't be lying and shit and think I'm going to sit there and shake my head with you, nigga. I'm coming over the couch. What's the next story, Nene? Old Block BJ. Old Block BJ, man. Old Block BJ. Old Block BJ was laughing in that backseat with Vaughn when Duck was asked the questions about Duck. But a tape came out today. A tape came out of a rest video. And BJ didn't have that same energy of laughing, man. Actually, BJ was like, can you bring everybody in a room who you grab? So I could see them take their weight. What BJ was trying to say, not saying that BJ snitched or none of that. But what I'm saying is, if you want to say Shark on Land snitched, then BJ did too. If that's what you want to say. You know what I'm talking about? If, if you want to say that Shark on Land told, BJ told too. Because BJ told the officers, can you bring everybody in a room and ask them again? You should have asked everybody together. You didn't ask everybody together. You should have asked everybody together. You know what I'm saying? So basically saying, that ain't my gun, but that's somebody, one of the foes that you asked. They just ain't taking their weight. Shark on Land said, let's not be biased now. If we're going to say Shark on Land did something, we're going to say everybody did something, man. We ain't seen nobody walk in that room and say that that was their gun. We ain't seen it yet. We seen five, we seen ten videos where people got caught with guns. And everybody leave the guns to the females. They ask Big Wani. Big Wani say, no, nah, they ain't my gun. They pulled it from his side. They come and ask the girl. She said, no. Nah. They say, oh, both of y'all going to jail. Wani say, get a girl his phone. Can you give my phone? The police said, no. Nah, we ain't getting her your phone. She going to jail with you. Boss top. He, he said that ain't his guns. The girl said they ain't his guns. 
they going to jail. They lost their cars and everything. You know what I'm saying? Niggas ain't taking their weight. Niggas ain't taking their weight, man. If if you say that, if you say that, if you say that Shark on Land told BJ said the same shit that Shark on Land, man. Hey, look, you hey, hey, look, I always remember this. It's two a word mean different things, man. Only thing they did was ask BJ different shit than the other police asked Shark. They was questioning Shark. They was trying to press Shark. So what are you trying to say? The guy in the other room did it? That's all they was doing. But BJ basically said that that wasn't his gun and that you can go and ask the other motherfuckers out there. A real motherfucking gang member supposed to say, get my lawyer. We all just finna go to jail until they work this shit out on their thing. Other than that, man, look. Y'all might as well just stop talking about snitching then. Whoever talking about snitching, just stop talking about that shit because y'all really don't know what snitching mean on that thing. Y'all really don't know what the shit mean. Y'all just throwing it out there freely on some real shit. The man ain't take his weight. Yeah, it was four people in the car with him, man. The man supposed to lawyer it up, man, period. If y'all ain't talking about he ain't tell or none of that, then don't say Shark on Land told, man. That's just bottom line, man. Like, we got to be real with this shit, bro. Everybody be, like, picking and choosing. Nah, don't pick and choose who you want to say this shit to. Say it to everybody because y'all got favors and shit. Nah, I ain't got no favors. I ain't I, I ain't best friends with Shark on Land, but it's just right and right and wrong is wrong. Oh, uh, you ain't got to worry about getting in the car with me and take your weight. I'm gonna tell you in front. I'm gonna tell you right in front of the police, nigga. That's your gun. I ain't no bitch. See all them? They bitches. They wait till they get a sidebar with the police, and now they want to talk to the police after they read them their Miranda and be like, "Oh yeah, yeah, yeah." D, can you go and ask everybody again? No, I ain't on that. Whoever had that motherfucker, hey bro, you ain't finna take your weight. I'm gonna ask you. I ain't gonna be talking to the police. Ain't no need for me to talk to the police. And I know that's your gun. Why am I waiting to talk to the police and that's your shit? On that thing, bro, I'm not finna holler at no police and we on the car and there's one gun in the fucking car and there's eight of us. On that thing, bro, you finna take that? And I hope that the other three band up with me against this one motherfucker and say the same thing I'm saying. You know, bro, take your motherfucking weight, bro. Like, for real, take your weight. I don't think BJ told... But I'm just saying, I just made that an example of, like, he wanted a motherfucker to take their weight. Shark on Land did, too. You know, but I guess since Shark on Land ain't popular in the drill, you know, let's go. Now, see if Shoebox had the same energy as, as with BJ as he had with Shark. Do you think if BJ walked through the New Beginning Church that Shoebox gonna say, oh, man, you told on camera? Let's just be real about it, man. Now, 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 say, now, say, say, now, say, say, hey, now, that's a whole different other story, man. You can't compare BJ or fucking Shark on Land to say, 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 the dog did it. Say, 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 the dog had the 38 on him. The police say, so you ran and threw the gun, say, no, the dog threw it. <laughs> say, 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 oh, my grandma, he say, what's your name? Jackson. Man, they know your motherfucking name, man. You wouldn't have gotten the police station if they ain't know your name, man. They done asked your name 50 times, bro. They know your motherfucking name, man. Hell yeah, I don't play that shit, though. If a nigga, if a nigga ride with me, bro, like, you gonna take your weight, bro. Or don't get in the car with no gun with me. Because I, if I got my gun on me, I'm gonna take my weight, bro. I ain't gonna look at Needy and say... Oh, babe, babe, can you take this for me? Hell no, nah, what I look like. So Nene could, hey, look, Nene gonna go to jail too. Now who gonna bond me out? Who gonna send me some money if Nene in jail? Just think about it. Just think about it. Nene gonna get some money. Her family paid. They gonna, she gonna, but she gonna be straight. Guess who ain't gonna be straight though? <laughs> the nigga who ain't take the gun. All I had to do is take the gun. Nene could have worked it out to get me out of that bitch. That's all I'm saying. That nigga say, my name Jackson. Yeah, Shoebox, we want to see a video of you questioning BJ. BJ going to smack the fuck out of Queen Latifah. I can tell y'all that right now. Queen Latifah ain't playing with BJ. 
Queen Latifah ain't playing with BJ, man. That's Chino Big Brother, man. On their thing. BJ. He ain't gonna play with BJ, bro. He'll play with Shark on Land again before he play with BJ. Prince Dre and Eat All, the real ones, yeah. Somebody try to make some fake paperwork on Eat All, man. That shit don't work with me, man. Hey, look, it's a new paperwork scanner, bro. It's a new paperwork app, bro, that you can scan a real doc. You can scan any document, whether it's from CPD or anything. You can scan that motherfucker, and it's going to tell you if it's a real document, bro. You know? I'm going to put my moderators up on it first before I put anybody else up on it. But, yeah. Smash that like button for me, y'all. Smash that like button for me so this video can get around, y'all. I'm rolling on my weed. Uh, yeah, somebody sent me some paperwork with Eda all the time about he told on somebody, man. That shit was faker than $2 bill, man. Niggas just making up shit. Yeah, eat all the original member, man. <sighs> eat all ain't doing no talking, man. He gonna he know his family coming to buy him out, bro. If he got a bond, his family buying them out, bro. They light scanned it, man. All them light scanned it. They coming to get him. They coming to get him, man. You know, light-skinned people, they come to get their family members. Dark-skinned nigga, you stand in there. <laughs> I done had a nigga say, man, your black ass can handle another six years. <laughs> hey, that fucked my head up, man. I'm like, damn, do they think I'm black? I'm supposed to be strong or something? Shit. Man, your black ass look like you could do another six-piece. Hey, everybody light skin, they're bonding out. I was up in there for a cigarette, motherfuckers laugh. Ah, you up in there for a cigarette. I'm like, yeah, 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 yeah. They happy I'm in here. Happy I'm in here. My homies now. Ha ha ha, you up in there for a cigarette. You know what I'm talking about? These my homies on the phone. I'm calling them, asking them for commissary money. They they bypassed the commissary money like, damn, for I still can't believe. This show, this show, eight months, this show, you going on six months on a cigarette, laughing in the background. How you think I felt? I felt like getting out and doing a block shoot, not no school shoot, a block shoot. Throwing a trench coat and kill all them niggas. Hell yeah, cigarette. I know y'all seen my motherfucking mug shot of the cigarette. Don't try to play it out. Y'all seen that mug shot of me getting caught with a cigarette on the L, smoking on the L platform. Don't play dumb with me now. Don't act like y'all ain't see that. It, nah, I did nine months for a cigarette. I'm talking about my six month in. I called my homie them. They get my. They tell my mama. Hey, get get swipe my number, man. We got some money for him. Soon when I call, they ain't got no money, but they got the bud of all jokes. Damn, foe, they got your ass. All the shit you done did, rob people and everything. Your ass up in there for a cigarette. Oh, ha, ha. Then it sounded like niggas was clapping in the background. <laughs> hey, that's what made Trenches News strong and not to go back to jail, bro. Cause them niggas was really laughing. They was happy I was in that bitch. You hear me? They was happy. You know? I remember that shit now. So when they hit me up and say, hey man, I'm out, man. I need a cash shop. I'm with my bitch. And I ain't got enough money, man, for the food. I tell them you better get up and run, then. That's what you better do. I got a tip for you. 
you better get your ass up and run when them riches go in the back. Goddamn, and they say they finna bring the check. On that thing, I ain't got shit for nobody. On that thing, any nigga did me wrong, lied to me about jail, hey, you will never see me with him again. You will never see me with him again. You only got one time to laugh at me. You only got one time to clap at me, and, they, and I ain't won no trophy. If I ain't won no trophy, if I don't get on the stage, and they got a motherfucker Oscar for me, bitch, don't clap. Don't clap if you don't see no trophy. Don't clap for me. Because I'm going to take it as you clapping at my shoes that I got on that's fucked up or something like that. You hear me? Yeah, when I remind the nigga, remember you was laughing when I was in jail about, about my cigarette? Oh, man, you still tripping about something that happened in it? Yeah, nigga, I'm still tripping. On that thing, I'm still tripping because that was some bitch-ass shit, nigga. On that thing. Yeah, niggas was laughing, bro. I ain't I ain't worried about no money. I ain't pressure no niggas. You know what I said? I said, when them niggas go to jail, I ain't sending them shit or ass in for them. I had a nigga tell me this time when I just got out. I had a nigga tell me, y'all. He say, I didn't know how to accept the call, Scud. And a man blocked my number. You know how you on there and it be like, press zero if you want to talk. Press nine if you want to block this number. This nigga press nine, bro. And then when I get out, he telling everybody to hit me up. Is my big brother now. Hey, tell Scud to hit me up, bro. I got some for him. Man, a nigga met up with me, man, in Minnesota and gave me $50, man. $50. Man, I had something else for you, man. I said, damn, man, it damn it cost me $50 to get to you. On some real shit. I met the man at the Mall of America. I done spent goddamn $50 on a ride. I'm getting up there like I know he finna hit me with something. This nigga done get $50, man. Oh, yeah, all right. Say, I ain't know how to answer the phone. I say, yeah, this is real. Slow than a motherfucker because it say zero if you want to talk. Three, if you want the phone to be louder. Five, if you want this motherfucker to call you back. And nine, if you don't want to talk to this person no more and you don't want them call your fucking phone no more. Hey, I think they still start talking like hood niggas. They need me on their automated system. One, if you want to pick up your fucking phone. Two, if you busy getting the nut and you just don't want to talk. Four, if you tired of this motherfucker calling and you, you want to report him. Six, you know what I'm talking about? Some shit like that. They need me on that motherfucker talking. Because these slow ass niggas who answering their phones, they don't need not to answer a free phone call. That motherfucker phone call free for, that motherfucker go like 30 seconds. They be like, hey, you have one minute free phone call. Hey, look, this the first thing you better say. Hey, mama, my R6412113, I need you to send me one. Uh, you, goodbye. You hear me? I'm telling you. Hey, if your people ain't got no money on that phone, that really piss you off. Because soon you answer that motherfucker, you better say R6412113. Hey, please send me this. Goodbye. On everything, bro. You better hope they put two and two together for you. That's why I don't go to jail no more, bro. One no nigga there for me, bro. I went through that shit. I went through that shit, and any nigga talking about broke now, you can't call me that. I got more money than your mama, nigga. On that, I can put you and your mama in the crib and pay both of our rents right now. So don't call me broke. I get offended with that out that shit now. On that thing, if you ain't got no bank account, you got your money in your pocket, don't call me broke if you, ride, if you walking around with your money. Because that means you walking around with your life savings, man. I can put I can put in my pocket what you got in your pocket and still show you my motherfucking bank account, nigga. I wear Levi's. Remember that. On that thing, you wearing Gucci and Louis and Dose Cabani. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> hey, look, I ain't buying that. I'm going out. Hey, look, I ain't going out like that. I ain't, I ain't going back broke. In order to go back broke, hey, you got to have a less of a taste. Nene going that motherfucker. Hey, 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 you want Mountain Dew or you want Dr. Dew? Hey, my, hey Nene, get Dr. Dew. <laughs> Nene be like, babe, we got too much money. You don't be drinking Dr. Dew. I be like, Nene, that's how your damn daddy them came up. <laughs> Listen, your daddy drink Dr. Dew. He rich. And motherfucker drinking Mountain Dew ain't got no money. On everything, y'all feel me? Y'all feel me, though? On everything. My wife asked me that the other day. She went in the store. She said, what you want to drink? I said, shit, I don't want no um, vitamin water because I always drink vitamin water. She said, what you want to pop then? I said, yeah, give me one of them cheap ones. 
She said, um, well, what you want a Mountain Dew? I said, no, nah, give me a Dr. Dew. Don't give me a motherfucking mixed pill. Give me a doctor pill on that thing. I want to feel uncomfortable so I can keep my money in my motherfucking bank account on that thing. I'm on, I'm trying to feel uncomfortable. I was uncomfortable before and surviving, man. Why not survive now when you got something on that thing, bro? When I was broke, I ain't complain. Why am I complain when I got something? Hell yeah, I'm getting doctor dude. Don't bring me about no Mountain Dew. I want doctor. I don't want Dr. Pepper. I want Dr. Do. <laughs> you got to get Mr. Pepper on there. You can't get Dr. Pepper. It say Mr. Pepper on that motherfucker. I was just keeping it real with y'all, man. My life real, bro. I, I ain't going, I ain't going back. I ain't going back to what I used to be, man. I ain't going back to what I used to be. I ain't going back to the to the same old shit that I was doing. You know, the money that I'm getting, I'm going to embrace this shit, and I'm going to thank God for giving it to me, and I'm going to do something with it. I ain't just going to be buying dr lean and drinks and, 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 and clothes, trying to impress the YouTube community. Y'all, he fresh. Yeah, he fresh, but you know that box that he finna go and live in? On that thing, like, fuck that. Take care of your kids. You'll get more of a blessing. Man, every day I ask the kids, man, what y'all want to eat? Anything, man. I be trying to get them to spend money, but they be like, they don't want nothing. My kids, like, they content with, you know, what they got unless they really go in there. Like, I finna let them go ahead and ball out this this, this time. I finna let them go in there and just go ahead. Pick, pick what you want, man, because they don't never be wanting to do it. Like, my son, man, I'll tell him to pick some shoes. He'll pick some, some motherfucker off-brand shoes. Like, no, nah, bro, you can't get them. You see the half of the rim bent on them shoes, and he dunked it. He didn't dunk so hard, he broke the rim on the shoes. My son don't care about that shit. If they look, if they're a nice color, he gonna want them bitches. He 10 years old. He don't know no, he don't know the difference. He ain't from Chicago. He ain't saying no Michael Jordan just off the top. That nigga going grab some shacks and y'all no. You ain't getting them motherfuckers. He want champion shoes and shit. You know what I'm talking about? Like. You know, I love them, though. They don't, they don't be want much, bro. Hell, yeah. You can't. Hey, look, I ain't got nothing against Shaq's. My mom was a crackhead, man. My mama tried to get us some Shaq's, me and my brother now. Hey, we told my mama, man, look, we wearing these shoes we got on. We going to wear these motherfuckers till the, to they bust out the box, till they turn to sandals. We ain't wearing no Shaq's. It's a real shit. When you wear Shaq's and the projects, say I jump off the green box. I could feel everything that was in the ground, goddammit, on the bottom of my shoe. I hit the bottom, I hit the ground hard. I, I, I'm on a fast break for a layup one day and some shacks. And I throw the ball up there. I come down out the eye, bro. My ankles felt every motherfucking crack in the ground, bro. I'm talking about you feeling everything in them motherfuckers. You know how you could jump in some Michael Jordans and it feel like a spring in the bottom of your feet, like you bounce up? Man, you jump up in some shacks, you're going to break your motherfucking ankles. I can't see how Shaq was playing them motherfuckers. He must have had some special combos made up in them motherfuckers, some special padding. They need to put some tempur up in them joints. Oh, they, they, they need to take the the uh, uh, hey, the motherfucking joint mattress in, in the joint comfortable than that motherfucker, them shoes. Smoke three E wall, man. Shout out, shout out, um, Trish News. I'm from the Hunnets. I'm from the Hunnets, man. Um, I'm from the Hunnets. You're a real one, bro. Hey, shout out, um, Smoke, man. Hey, I appreciate it, Smoke. I ain't got nothing against E wall, man, but fuck Rico Reckless, man. I'm gonna say that one time to you. I see you got E wall, but shout out to Lil D John, man. Little DJ, man, that's my little homie, man. On that thing, recipes flocker too. Them my little homies, man. Them, they, hey, look, they'll tell you swiper. On that thing, they'll tell you about it. But yeah, if you from Ewall, I, 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 I don't, I don't mess with nobody. But you know, what I'm talking about like I ain't picking no sides. But I'm saying I know a real dude from Ewall. Yeah, shout out DJ, man. Let DJ know who Swipe is. Oh, there, All you got to do is say Swipe. I 
I can't wait till little DJ get out of jail, man. Yeah, I can't wait till little DJ get out of jail, man. I'm gonna tell him about Rico Reckless, man. Rico Reckless is a fucking embarrassment, man. He a clown, bro. Like he a clown, bro. And this ain't even about duck, man. It's just that when you with niggas, bro, when you with real, when you hang with real niggas, y'all can get into it, man. When a nigga die, bro, you don't be talking about his death, bro. Like that ain't no real shit. If me and you get into a fight, smoke, and me and you homies, or we've been kicking around, got the same ops. Ducking, shoot, shootings and shit. If you die, man, you was into it, bro. I never say, man, F smoke. You know what I'm talking about? Just off the strength. Now, if he doing some shit like that, smoke, y'all and Ewall got to watch out for him. Because when y'all get into him, he going to be smoking on y'all homies. You hear me? If he was with this nigga for all these years under the BDK act with him, and he disrespecting this dead man, just imagine what he going to do to y'all. I'm just saying, I ain't trying to start nothing. I'm just saying, man, when you got niggas doing, when you got niggas doing clown shit like that, he gonna do it to y'all one day. But hopefully, y'all catch his ass and bury him when he do it to y'all. You hear me? Cause my my boy homies ain't on shit. I'm just saying, man, I ain't on shit to start shit. I'm just saying, man, I ain't the best. The truth teller said they ain't no shit. Not me. I just heard truth teller said. But I'm just saying, my my boy homies ain't on shit. Not saying that they ain't on shit. I'm just saying they must have fell back. They must have retired from this. This shit. Not saying that that ain't no bad thing, but they ain't no shit on that thing. I keep this shit one thousand. They ain't no shit. So I hope y'all catch him once he disrespect y'all home. Yo, Trench. Then you say you was forty eight. Hey, man. Hey, catch me. Hey, look. Catch me after my birthday. Catch me at 11 years, man. After my birthday, 11 years, I'll be 48, nigga. Don't ever disrespect me like that, Rakeem. You hear me? On that thing, bro. Hey, 11 years, man. 11 years, I'll be 48, man. Make sure you get that shit on the countdown, on the record, man. After my birthday, May 7th, then you count 11 years after that, I'll be 48, man. I'll be gradually 48 after that, man, all right? Oh, oh. Oh, no, no, no. I was talking about dude in the comments. I wasn't talking to Rakeem. I was just answering Rakeem. For all the people who want to know if I'm 40 or not. No, man. No, not yet, man. Not yet. Not yet, nigga. Keep on praying, though. Talk to me, I talk back. What else going on out there, Nene? What else going out there, baby? You got to be like the newscast, baby. Well, today on uh, the Apollo. No. I'm not a newscast. You getting something to shit. Man, little Mo out of jail, man. Hey, little man, little mo from MOB out of jail. He didn't got fat than a motherfucker. He's sober. Look like his clan kid. Them them pills still in his face though. He look like he still got a little unk in him. You know, but shout out little mo. Ah oh, hell yeah, I got them Levi's, nigga. These racks can't fit in my jeans because I'm rocking skinnies. Skinnies. <laughs> Five oh one, nigga. Man, Nene smoking on some perp right now. That shit be putting me to sleep. I woke up, smoked the blunt. Nene was gone. Nene gone. I smoked the blunt when Nene left out the door this morning. Fell right back to sleep. Nene, wake me up. You want to go to Hurl Chicken, baby? Yeah, we on our way, baby. My my baby woke me up. She always know what I need, man. Want to go to Hurl Chicken, baby? Well, I ain't paying for it, damn it. You know it's on me, baby. Okay. You know, I still try to use my little my little um Ray Ray them skills. You know, see if I still got it to use a woman. So yeah, Nene asked me to take me out on a dinner date, and I said yeah. I ain't got no money, but you got some. Say yeah, baby, I'll take you out. No problem. Looking at my account, like yeah, shit. I wish this shit was happening in 2012. Shit, I'd be rich. <laughs> yes, yeah, sir. Cause this shit put you down. Do you know Tay Savage? Yeah. I, hey, look. Hey, look, man. Tay Savage is from the low end, man. Tay Savage is from the low end, man. Everybody know about Tay Savage, bro. This shit public record. 
G, I remember when I was about to bust off this white shirt and shiny, and your ass kept a nigga from um crashing on his ass. Kid Venom. Hey, yeah, motherfuckers be getting wild and shiny. I ain't gonna need a lie. I probably did though. Hey, I got a real story though, man. That I ain't never tell nobody, bro. On the 4th of July, right? On the 4th of July of April. April. I mean, it was April, July. No, it was July. I'm saying 4th of July, April. <laughs> July, the 4th of July, bro, of 2015. Me and T Roy was sellies. And we 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 had they had to move us from the sales to division two, the holes in the wall, because it was flooded in division one. Division one crumbling. It's like old. It's the oldest building since Al Capone them. They still got Al Capone them sell up and up. So we was having a um, we was having uh, we we was over there for the fourth of July. They moved us over there like July second. They moved us over there to the hole in the wall. So we making dips and shit. So you know it's the fourth of July and the guards come up in there and tell us that we got to get on our bunk that it's over with. You know what I'm talking about? It's the fourth of July. The windows open. You can hit a Mexicans and re re re. Key, key, key. You get all this shit. So we refuse the whole deck. It's me, T Roy, Gerald Hoover on their thing. Um, Cam from Ruger Rural. These niggas who still lie, they'll vouch for this shit. Um, uh, shiny, um, one of the niggas from um from where Shaky from on their thing, bro. Like the police came up in there. We sent it up with the shit. We sent it up. We sent up the whole fucking deck on their thing, bro. They took half of the people to the hole. They left half of the people up there, bro, because they couldn't catch everybody on camera who was throwing shit or none of that on that thing, bro. We got wild with the cops, though. There's niggas who still alive could vouch for this shit, bro. We sent it up. White shirt got knocked out. My homie Cam Cam from Wilgarill, he knocked out a white shirt. He went to he went to the hole. I'm going to get Cam from Wilgarill on here so he can tell y'all this story. This shit real on my mama. And he going to tell y'all T-Roy was on the deck with us and everything, bro. Like, for real. These names who people still alive for I'm naming. So y'all go in their inbox. If y'all can find Cam from Wiggerill, y'all can ask them, bro. No, we weren't spending none of that. We weren't doing that shit when I was in the county. We weren't doing, we weren't doing none of that. You got you got goof ass niggas who was doing that shit, but ain't no real nigga doing no spending, no nothing. You know what I'm saying? Hell yeah, man. On the 4th of July, we sent it over 12, though, bro. On some real shit. They had us all handcuffed in the hallway. Then they let half of us go back in. And they took half of the people to the hole on that thing. Broke them up. Me and T-Roy was still sellies until I left off the deck. I left. Um, They reinstated my probation on the 9th. July 9th. They reinstated my probation, bro, back. And when they reinstated my probation, that's when I stood on the table and told them to ride with T-Roy and shit. Like, anybody ride with him, his ops coming there, don't let them um, jump on them. What? Yeah, Rico a clown, man. Hey, my Cam Capone interview coming up too, y'all. My Cam Capone interview coming up with Cam Capone. Make sure y'all be looking out for that. It's finna drop any day now. My new Cam Capone. I got a humble soul at a humble soul. I got an interview with him too. He a dope dude, be interviewing and shit. I got an interview coming up with him. So y'all got two interviews coming up from Trenches News, man. Make sure y'all be looking out there and support me, man. Shout out my boy C Hood, all my moderators, all that. They wasn't just spitting. They was putting um, chili noodle seasons and, uh, oh, man, they was cooking a meal then if they was doing all that, Twitch. It sounded like they was doing, they was cooking a gumbo. They wasn't just doing no savage life shit. If they putting chili powder and all that, they trying to make a meal. We on the road to 100k. Make sure y'all share this to Reddit. Any anybody on Reddit, make sure y'all share all my videos to Reddit, man. I'm finna get a Patreon so I can give y'all exclusive content too. Nene setting it up. She's gonna be setting it up. So make sure y'all be looking out for that for exclusive stories. That's why I'm gonna put my stories on Patreon, man. Cause you know. He said niggas putting chili noodles in that cheek. That shit burn. You know, if you put, you know, if you put some chili, uh, some salt on, some salt on the open wound, that shit gonna burn. 
Hell no, nah, I'm crazy, man. Shout out Boss Rob. Oh, uh, that ain't Boss Rob. That, that ain't Boss Rob. That's a fake page. Huh? Yeah, you stick, you stick, you stick some on um, chili season, and then the nigga asshole, his ass gonna be on fire. <laughs> hey, you can eat, you can eat a lot of hot stuff and shit it out. Your ass gonna be burned. How your asshole ever burnt? Man, one day I, it, Dini brought me a whole bag of um. She brought me that hot ass popcorn, flaming hot popcorn. Then I had some ranch flaming hot Doritos. We was watching a movie, so I mixed all this shit together and I ate the whole big ass bag of it while we was watching. We was watching hardball. I was watching it with my son, me, 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 and my son. We was watching hardball. So the next morning I woke up, right? And I and, and Nene gone and shit. She bring me a coffee. I drink the coffee, man. It was a hard ball for real. I was on that motherfucker. Oh, uh, don't ever eat no a lot of hot shit, bro. And go in the morning, bro. That shit burn. You was calling brick. Who was that? You was calling brick, baby mama Tasha for him and shit. That's when niggas was fine. You gotta be a real motherfucking person, bro. Hey, you got to be a real person, bro. Because I was calling Brick Baby Mama Tasha, bro. You got to be a real person, bro. Hey, shout out to Tasha, man. On my mama Tasha, she answered every phone call when I called her, bro. Me and Brick was in two separate jails, bro. Brick was in Cook County, and I was in a joint, bro. And Brick made sure she answered, she answered every phone call. She told me what was going on with Brick. And all that shit, bro. She kept me updated with it. Shout out to Brick, bro. She the realest baby mama. One of the realest baby mamas out here, bro. On that thing. Uh, Rob had to make a new account. <laughs> Hey, G, can you speak on the IGDs and the shy love from Southside? Hey, look, I'm going to keep it real with you, Ricky Barnes. Brain side, Brian side. Hey, look, I don't like gangs, bro. Gangs, the reason why our city tore up. But we don't, we, hey, motherfuckers don't want to have them conversations. So any nigga talking about they gang banging, bro, no matter what you is, BD, GD, that's your prerogative of you if that's what you want to do. But I ask you this, and I challenge you this. Can you show me a um check slip? Can you show me a bank slip? Can you show me a 401k plan? Can you show me a um a unemployment check? Can you show me any one of them documents, man, that's saying that you got paid for that game? Because if you can't, man, then that shit frivolous and me even talking to you about that shit. You hear me? That's what type of time I'm on, bro. Like, I report stories, but if you game banging and you ain't got no money out that shit, bro, you game banging for nothing, bro. I don't give a fuck about no BD, GD, Stone, or none of that, bro. Like, I'm a man, bro. I'm a motherfucking man, bro. So all that shit don't even matter to me, bro. Oh, there they. You, I, hey, I bet you can't call whatever gang you in and tell them, hey, my rent due. Hey, can y'all, can the gang add up on $800? Niggas gonna be like, man, I'm fucked up, man. And we can't even do nothing, bro. I just spent that shit. You gonna be homeless. Or a nigga tell you, you can come stay with me for a couple of days until you find a job. Come on, man. Like, what the fuck? You think I'm going to go back through that shit? Hell no. There you go, Diddy. Shout out Trap Lord Ross once again, man. 
Shout out Trap Lord Ross once again. Trenches News, I ain't got no problem with you. I heard your documentary. I heard your opinion. Now, do he got 11 bodies? Do I don't no, no, no. I don't think he I don't think he even went that crazy, bro. Like for real, I don't think he went that that ape shit out here in Iraq. Like a lot of niggas be claiming bodies that they ain't do though. That's that's true. You know what I'm talking about? Cause I done seen a lot of motherfuckers. I ain't want to say their name to bring up no shit, but and then to somebody say something to me. But I know a lot of people who on these videos that then claim some shit that I know for a fact they ain't do it. And I got proof because I got I got I got tweets when other motherfuckers who did it, they telling them, shut the fuck up. We did this shit on their thing. I got them type of tweets too. I just saved my shit for ammo for fire. I play chess. I told y'all. So when a nigga try to come at me, I could I could show you when Lil B calling certain niggas goofies and all this shit. You hear me? I could show you this shit. I just keep it for fire though, just in case one of these little niggas want to play with me or something. Then I could tell you how. Oh, don't you look up to this nigga where he said you was a motherfucking goofy. Nine twelve of of two thousand eleven, nigga. He said you was a goofy and you wasn't about that shit. But you talking now. You know, for sure, homie. I'm a working man trying to get these guys around my way. That ain't that ain't um it. I'm turning all the little G's to in, on, on to you, homie. Hey, yeah, facts, bro. Facts, bro. Hey, yeah, facts, man. Hey, you do that, Marvin L. James, man. What's up, Big Dog Jason? What's up? Shout out Kaya, baby. Shout out Queen Lotus, the beautiful Queen Lotus, man. The OG in the house, Joe Demar. What's up, man? Shout out that BZ. Oh, yeah. My rich is smoking, man. Like, don't play with them, bro. Don't, just don't play. Like, my moderators come in peace, man. But if you start playing and shit, they're going to wipe you, bro. Like, for real. We 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 trying to grow our channel. They trying to help me grow, bro. But they going to make sure that we protect it, bro. Like, we don't need that in here. But, yeah, I ain't mad at Trap Lord Ross, man. And I just think, like, who, whatever you bloggers who hating on Trap Lord Ross, y'all just need to step y'all equipment up, step y'all motherfucking um, commentary up, step y'all, go back to school. It's okay why you on YouTube, go back to school and learn, learn, um, learn motherfucking entertainment and business management and shit like that. Learn that shit. And then come back and, and do what Trap Lord Ross did. That's all he is. He an educated um, dude from over there in the UK somewhere. And goddamn it, he put he see that it's a cash cow all them three is checks to me like damn he 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 see that they killing each other over there but y'all y'all killing each other but y'all don't want him to report about this shit like ain't this shit what about the other families that 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 this person did something to what about them what about they feelings what about they family members that got killed you know what i'm saying so you know we we be at the wrong people man we got to start the folks in on you know what I'm talking about? If you want to come at anybody, man, if anybody want to come at anybody, go at them game members, bro. That's what motherfuckers need to be in their inbox and arguing with them, man. That's how I feel, bro. That's just how I feel, bro. It's useless talking to me because I'm trying to get my kids to UCLA on their thing. So what you talking about is irrelevant to me. I'm going to get my kids to UCLA. I'm going to get them a future that, I, that they ain't never had. You know what I'm talking about? I'm trying to get them whatever school they're going to. I'm going to help. I'm going to get them an apartment, a cot, and set them straight like a real fucking parent supposed to. I'm sorry I had to catch up late, but guess what? I caught up on that thing. I caught up just in time, never too late. 37 years old in May on jerk day. 37 years old, man. I caught on just in time. I caught on to my environment, man, on that thing. And I thank the, thank the Lord Jesus Christ for always protecting me and keeping me covered. Always standing on me, man. Making sure, and everybody who rise up against me will not prosper, man. Your ass gonna get struck down. I'm telling you, bro. I'm God's son, bro. God know what I did in the streets, bro. That's why He always protect me. He be like, man, I gotta make sure you keep this message out, man. I'm gonna protect you at all costs. So I thank God, man, keeping me alive. You know, could have been shot. I got shot in my head. Could have been dead. Got shot up again. I could have been dead. You know what I'm talking about? I done watched everybody around me. I've been around a couple of motherfuckers who were stretched out on the ground. A couple of these people y'all be talking about. Like Taekwon, he was on the ground. K.I. was on the ground. You know what I'm talking about? I walked over there and seen OD laying in the middle of King Drive. Like, that shit hurt, bro. 
you know, a couple more people I seen stretched out. The shit hurt though. You know, what I'm not supposed to, I'm not supposed to have no feelings just because you calling that they're your friend, but I seen it. I'm not supposed to be traumatized because that's your friend. That's your argument. Oh, that's my friend. Boy, I wish I had my pages, bro. I got more motherfucking conversations from KI than anybody ever imagined. They blood, they took my Wiley Montana page on you on Facebook. They did it on purpose when I got into it with the FBG boys. Yeah, I'm calling you motherfuckers out because y'all took my page, but we cool though. But y'all took my page on that thing. But if I, I my pictures in my wheelchair, pictures, all that shit was on that page, bro. They took it on that thing. I had like 25,000 followers on there. They took my page, bro. Oh, yeah, we ain't even gonna talk about that zesty shit on this page, though. Because we don't even play like that, Tony Hill. On that thing, we ain't gonna need to start talking about that zesty shit. We already been known when he dropped his low to the when he dropped his low to the dude in um in Vegas, he dropped his location. I'm five minutes away from the strip. I am too. I'm like, damn, they they that hey. <laughs> Oh, love connection on, on you, you, you got love connection going on on your motherfucking arm. Um, why is you hosting a motherfucking uh, interview? Like, damn. Motherfuckers have a love connection on the interview. I thought they, I thought, I thought this motherfucker was supposed to be on that bashing look, Jay. This motherfucker on that trying to get hooked up with the interviewer. Oh, that shit recorded too. Don't try to delete it. That shit recorded. Yeah, we got the video. We got the video, diggers. I'm just saying that. I'm just saying when you when you ask a motherfucker where they at, you interviewing them, and then you ask them where they at, and then they say I'm five minutes from the strip, and then you say I'm five minutes from the strip too, and you talk to a gilly. You know what I'm talking about? Hey, my name been and I ain't in it. I'm just saying, y'all get in the comments and let me know what y'all think. Hey, they said Trap Lord Ross can't do a documentary, man. Somebody inbox Trap Lord Ross, tell him to hit me up. Tell him, let's split that shit. Let's do a documentary with me. Let's split that shit. Then what they gonna say? I'm from the rack, nigga. And I'll pop out to the rack anytime I want to. Nigga, I'll eat your favorite meal on your block. On that thing. I ain't playing when I say that shit. I ain't, I ain't playing. I go anywhere I want to. I'm just smart. You know what I'm talking about? I go anywhere I want to, but I just don't go where I know a motherfucker don't fuck. If I know that you fake kicking and you just trying to be around me because of for a cash app or something like that. Before I leave, you're going to ask for a cat. I ain't going to need to come around you, nigga. On that thing, you looking for, I know Swipe, when he get here, he going to give me a hundred or two. Let me hold it. You know, because I don't be into passing out 20s with a nigga. When a nigga asks for 20, I got to send 50. Because now I'm thinking like how I used to be. I asked you for 20, but really I need 50 because I'm trying to get some weed, blunt squares. You know what I'm talking about? A drink, some chips, maybe a, maybe maybe of some food, you know? And I needed the 50. But I said 20 because I know that was the easiest thing to get. You know, so I still think like I'm in the streets when I send people money. You know, I still think, you know, what how how I was when I was asking for money. So when niggas ask me for 20, I send them 50. You ask me for 50, I'm going to send you 100 ball. You know what I'm saying? You ask for 100, that's what the fuck you going to get. Because if that 100 can't break in fours and you can't get what the fuck you going to get with that, then you ain't getting nothing. Yeah, you never want to ask for more, bro. Even though you need it, you might need 50 on the head. But you know what I'm talking about? You rather just ask for the 20 because you know that's more attainable. Yeah, but I ain't forgot about the streets. I forget a lot of shit. I cannot forget the streets, though. I forget a lot of shit, man. I remember them days, man, of going up and down. I remember when I was growing up and then high shit, then my brother got a bag. My brother come back from Minnesota, BMW, photo. Mm -hmm clean fucking with my dough is like fucking with my pride and fucking with my whole is like fucking with my guys it's two things in life that you just don't mess with 
act like a trick and like a trick you get dealt with. You hear me? That was that mace. Now, you know I love my crazy flow, but here go that crazy dough. Hey, on my mom, my brother came back with that shit with a bag, with a duffel bag. You hear me? He told me. He said, man, when I come back from Minnesota, little bro, we ain't never going to be broke no more. On that thing, my brother stood on that. My brother Imani, rest in peace. He went to Minnesota, got a bag. This is 98. 1998, bro. Went to Minnesota. I was in se- I was in sixth grade, seventh grade. On that thing, bro. Brother came back, bro. And I I, I enjoyed all the years until after I graduated from high school. That's when I was back on my own again because I was doing what I wanted to do. You know what I'm talking about? But up until then, bro, took care of me. Iceberg. True religion. Well, I mean, not one of true religion, but it was um what well, what's the other shit called? True religion down there stole they shit. Um iceberg. Um, it was something else. It was it was something else with the characters on that bitch. But um, it was like true religion now. But all that shit, man. I had all that shit. I bet mean, I went to school one day about my, my teacher say, Can you step in the hallway? So are, are you selling drugs? What the fuck you I'm selling drugs. Yeah, because one of the students say your shirt costs two hundred dollars on that thing, bro. I'm like, shit, my brother brought it for me. You know? No, not no iceberg, uh platinum fubu. Yeah, platinum fubu. That's when fubu first when fubu first came out, fubu was the shit though. People be laughing though. When Fubu came out, when Fubu first came out, bro, Fubu was hot just like any other clothing line. That's hot. Motherfuckers was wearing Fubu like a Mary. Echo, Inichi, Jabo, all that shit was hot, bro. Jabo, the wearing Jabos was like wearing the Marys, goddamn it, then. On that thing, you had the all black Jabos. That was like you was wearing the Marys, man. On my mama, Coogee sweaters. All that, I had all that shit, bro. My brother had a bag, bro. I had a first down leather, bro. A first down leather that was cut. It was a first down. It was leather, bro. I went to Route 66. My homies never could vouch for this shit. We got into it, man. Niggas try to take my coat. They try to cut my sleeve off. They cut my whole motherfucking coat over trying to get my coat, bro. On that thing, we sung Route 66 up, bro. We was fighting against the BDs, uh, the, our own guys, bro. On that, they seen my coat. I was fresh than a motherfucker. I had on the mics, all that shit, bro. Like, I was fresh in the projects. My brother had a duffel bag. I was fresh in the project. In Newtown, in Newtown, when I was a teenager, I was fresh than a motherfucker. You can ask anybody about that. On that thing, ask any motherfucker. Was I fresh when my brother had a bag? I was fresh than a motherfucker. Hell yeah, all that shit dope. And then on the coast side, Helly Henson. Helly Henson was like wearing a Helly Henson coat was like wearing motherfucker a uh, um what's that shit little Dirk gonna be wearing? Balenciaga. If you had a Helly Henson coat, you was like wearing Balenciaga, bro. If you had a motherfucking North Face, bro, it was like you was the rich. Then no motherfucker broke motherfuckers had no North Faces. LRG, all that shit, all that shit was the shit then. No, matter of fact, it wasn't no LRG then. It wasn't no LRGs yet. LRG ain't come out yet. It wasn't no LRG yet. It wasn't no LRG. It was Echo and all that shit out. I, LRG came like going down. Like LRG was like when Rockwell. <sighs> Rockwell was that shit. On my mama, bro. You had some Rockwell Evizu jeans. Um, um, uh, Ed and Hardy's, um, all that shit, bro. That that shit, them flight jackets, the Obama jackets. They call it the Obama jackets, bro. Them bitches been out, bro. Niggas been wearing that shit. We used they had Obama jackets and pay less. Oh, yeah. If you had Sean John, Nautica, Mecca, um, all that shit, bro. You was the man, bro. They had this shit in, they had this shit in um. And, and Marshalls, Burton Co. Factory, Target. I mean, TJ Maxx. All that shit. TJ Maxx was a stoda hit. TJ Maxx had everything. Tommy Hill figure everything, bro. Guess. Yes, guess. I used to love guess. I had the whole jean outfit guess. 
on everything. I had guest jean outfit, the whole outfit. Rocker wear, the whole jean rocker wear outfit. When I tell you my brother had paper, he had paper, bro. He was getting enough of that shit. On my mama, he was getting so much of that shit, bro. I had the jean, the whole outfit. On everything. Trisha News one always fucked up. Don't believe them. It was spurts in this shit. It was spurts. Everybody was fucked up. But if you look at all them pictures back then, you will see Bezu with some big clothes on fucked up. You hear me? What you gonna say? He dirty? Bezu got more money than a lot. Any nigga who talking. On some real shit. Any nigga who talking. He got more money than niggas. Niggas living in mansions and shit, bro. Like, how dare you say somebody a bomb and broke when you live with your mama? Tell your mama to hold on. Wait till the YouTube check come in. Nigga, you better up one of them hundreds in your pocket. Or was the garbage bag wasn't real? <laughs> motion permission. I mean, um, motion picture. Hey, I the one who told them boys how to get that motion, motion picture money. On that thing. Me and Manny, man. Shout out to Manny, man. Shout out to Young and them daddy. On my mama. We the first, we the first motherfuckers who had that most of permission money. Then nobody know about the most in picture money. That's the fake hundreds that look like hundreds, real hundreds. We even had the one that see niggas don't know how. See, niggas don't want to pay that real money for the ones that look like the color in a hundred dollar bills. So niggas get the white bills that look white and fake. You know what I'm talking about? And that's how you could tell they shit fake because they ain't paid that real money. Like we was paying, we was paying eight hundred dollars. For motherfucking hundred thousand dollars worth of hundred dollar bills and promotion picture money, it looked like hundred dollar bills. But when you look up close to it, it's a motion picture in a strip. On that thing, bro. Like we was getting that shit. We had a hundred thousand dollars worth of that shit. Every video you see them little niggas in motion picture. So when a nigga get on live and show some money, I know I know fake money and real money. I count hundreds all day. My son count all the hundreds. Ask my son. I call my son in here right now. He'll tell you. He ain't even in the room with me. He'll tell you, nigga, how many hundreds he didn't touch. On that thing, the most in picture money. That's, hey, that's what niggas was stunned with. 2012, 13, all them videos. Niggas ain't had no motherfucking money. Niggas, niggas, niggas had most in, um, most in picture money, bro. You can order that shit off the internet, man. Tommy gets Scully Wade cap. Oh, yeah. Tyler want to be the next. Hey, hey, he ain't going to be the next. He is the next motherfucker. Hell yeah, I had the whole guest jean outfit, bro. Like, for real, my brother's coming back from Minnesota with mics that Chicago ain't even had from the Mall of America, bro. Like, my brother was ordering my shoes. Like, my eighth grade graduation, my brother ordered my shoes. They, the mics that I had on, didn't come out for to for six seven months in Illinois, bro. And I already had them, bro. Like I I done been used to that shit. I'm used to being fresh and all that shit. So it don't mean shit to me. When I was broke, it was just like a a a, a period where I, I yeah I was fucked up. But everybody was fucked up. So that don't mean shit to me when the nigga say that. How much money you got now? What assets do you got now? Do you have any CDs? Do you have any stocks or anything? Do you have anything like besides showing me some money in your pocket? Cause that shit ain't worth nothing. Cause once you spend a hundred dollar bill, that shit gone. If you got twenties in your pocket, that shit ain't nothing. Cause it's gone on that thing. Once I spend a hundred dollar bill, I ain't gonna need a lot of y'all. I get everything to my wife. I, I get everything in Nene. Everything in my pocket that ain't no hundred dollar bill. I get. She can have all the money in the world. I give it to my wife though. I just think it's bad luck, man. I had a change in your pocket, so I give it to my wife, and she put it up. We got a whole purse filled of money right under my wife's bed. We got a whole purse filled with money up and out, like loose money, bro. Like I'm learning to save, bro. I'm learning. I'm learning that you ain't got to impress the real, bro. But what the fuck I'm going to get a motherfucking, what the fuck I'm going to pay with a coat 
that got two little symbols on that that worth five thousand dollars when i can go and get a coat for 200 300 dollars that that's gonna keep me warmer than warmer you hear me like shit, i ain't trying to impress no motherfucker. hell yeah like shit. i could go and get the same material your coat got that you paid five thousand dollars for and put a trenches news sign on that motherfucker, on that thing Yup, yup, yup. Exact. Well, I'm a nerd too then. Hey, but yeah, though, man. Y'all believe in y'all self, man. Just stay prayed up, bro. Whatever you searching for in life, bro, and whatever you pray for, bro, it'll come true, man. You just stay down, man. Don't just pray for shit and then when you get it. And then when you get the shit, then you don't believe in God no more shit like that because he'll stop blessing you. Because I, I used to do that shit in jail. Lord, please let me out of jail. I ain't going to do it no more. And I get out of jail. I go to court and get out of jail, bro, and do the same shit, go and post up the same place. You know what I'm talking about? And be right back in jail. One time I got locked up for a trespassing on 62nd and Rose. I got locked up for a trespassing. It's me, Crack P5, who got killed, who's in a documentary. Me, him, motherfucking um, Lil Drill from EBT, Wee Wee from EBT. Um, I was all that shooting dice. The police came up, walked up to me, said, um, matter of fact, hood stepdaddy, hood stepdaddy walked up to me and said, man, you got a warrant, Wiley. You hear me? Walked dead up to me, bro. It's hot than the motherfucker outside, bro. I'll go back to jail. They, hey, look, and then they put a trespassing on me. He left me with the white dudes, and they said, oh, we got to put a trespassing on you too, my fault. You know what I'm saying? So I, I was pissed. So I went to jail for the trespassing. I get out. Now, this is my second trespassing. This is my second trespass within 30 days. You know, you get three trespasses. You go, you got to go to the counter for 30 days. I got out and stood right there, and they came and got me. Soon I got out. I got off the bus. I got off the bus. On, I got off the bus on, like, um, I ain't get off on King Drive. I got off on Eberhardt. And I walked back towards Rock Childs. Seeing my homie now. My homie gave me some weed, gave me some blunts. Like, man, you out, bro? Stay out. Man, I walked right back to Rose, the same spot, bro, and the police got me, bro. Ten minutes later, I went out for 10 minutes, and I had to go and do 30 days in Cook County Jail, bro. So that's why I get offended when I say, why would I go and stand in the same place and do the same shit? I already learned my lesson, bro. Like, for real, I've been locked up for a lot of bullshit, too, like petty shit. Hey, can you give me the um, charger, baby? I got, I got 15 more minutes on here. Now, hood stepdaddy the law. Hood stepdaddy is a is a uh, retired lieutenant. Hood baby mama, that's her is dead her daddy. He a fast nigga, bro. He ain't no nigga gonna put shit on you or none of that. If he catch you red handed, he catch you. But if you got a warning, and he know you, it's time to go. Oh yeah, it's trespassing and um and anywhere in the hood. It's trespassing, bro. And don't listen to no motherfucker say you can stand on my front. Soon the police come. I ain't tell them that. Man, that'd be the worst shit. When a motherfucker say you can sit in their gate and y'all got guns on y'all, then when the police come, they get police permission to search. I'd have been in that type of shit too. Only thing about it, they got caught with their guns on them, so they had to go, you know. It wasn't no, you ain't had to tell the police this was nobody gun. They got caught with them bitches. Y'all showed out tonight for me, man. Hey, shout out Dutchy, man. Dutchy, the realest dude from Tukerville, man. I don't want to talk. Like Wooski. Dutchy, the realest dude from over there in Tukerville, man. The realest dude. Don't ask me who else. Dutcho is, man. FBG Dutchy, man. He the realest nigga who's still alive from over there. Bottom line, man. I got so much respect for Dutchy. Got so much respect for his OG and all that shit, bro. I hope that little nigga get rich, man. I ain't gonna lie to you. 
He ain't been nothing but real with me. Even when I got into it with his homies now, Dutchie ain't never come out and say nothing about me. Nothing, nothing. You know, he ain't get involved with that shit. He probably told him, swipe gonna fuck y'all up, bro, while y'all playing. That's the type of nigga Dutchie is, though. Dutchie so real that he'll tell him that. Y'all know swipe, uh, y'all know swipe been around, bro. So why y'all gonna even get on there and try to cap? You know what I'm talking about? Like, so shout out to Dutchie, man. I talked to Young, man. Me and Young ain't into it. Hey, look, Young Diddy, Young. Hey, look, I told Young Diddy the game of the business side of the of the of the music of the of the music side. I told him everything that I know, and Young Diddy taught me how to hustle. He told me how to wake up in the morning at six o'clock and get up and get to it. You know what I'm talking about? So me and Young, we was into it about some words, bro. I wasn't never no stoke runner, bro. Every nigga I hung with was a leader. If you ever see me in a video, if you see me hanging with some niggas, you gonna see me hanging with the people who like that. You ain't gonna see me hanging with no goofies. You ain't gonna see me hanging with just no anybody. You ain't never seen me on the block just hanging with J-Man. You're not gonna see me hanging with him. Fuck, I'm hanging with him and he a target. And he he just a um, person who chasing shells. Who gonna run from him. I was hanging with niggas who gonna shoot back. You know what I'm talking about? If they did come through. If you was gonna be out there, you might wanna hang with that type of person. Yeah. Hey, Dutchie, I ain't mean to put you out there like that, none of that, but you just a real nigga in my book, man. So shout out to you, Dutcho, man. I, I hope you go find in the motherfucker, bro. I always be praying for you. you know, it, we might don't talk, but I always pray for the best for you, bro, on everything. I always pray for the best. I just had to say that. I think I said that in one of my interviews coming up. They asked me who the realest dude over there, Dutchie, man, hands down. Dutchie over there and E Dog over there, my two favorite people. One from 63rd. Well, you know, all know Duck and Brick, my favorite people from over there. Duck, Brick, and G Daisky and Creed. They're my favorite people. But if I got to pick somebody who's still alive, Dutchie and E Dog, they're my two favorites from 63rd period. I know if I'm with Dutchie, ain't shit going to happen to me over there. And I know if I get over E Dog, ain't shit happening to me in the O. So I'm good. Yeah, FBG Young, cool, bro. He cool. Like, we done talked, laughed about the store running shit and everything, man. We done laughed about this shit, man. Me and Young, and we done laughed about this shit. Hey, look, I brought up the store running shit. Young spit out. Hey, Young was drinking some shit. Young was drinking some shit in the barber chair. And Hustle Man 365, shout out Hustle Man. Hustle Man had Young, FBG Young on the camera. He called me FaceTime. And FBG Young got on the camera, and we was talking to each other. And Young had some pop in his mouth. And, 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 and I was like, and we was talking to each other. And Young was like, he said something like, man, big bro, you know I love you. And I was like, I ain't no store runners. And he spit that shit out of his mouth out the bottom. Shit, that shit was funny as hell, bro. Yeah, I say, hey, look. I say, Young, this is what I said to him that made him spit the shit out of his mouth. I say, Young, now before we make truce, you want me to run to the store for you one more time? And he spit that shit out of his mouth, man. That shit was so funny, man. But shout out to Young, bro. Like, I make I make peace with people we ain't really got no war with. But if you play with my wife or anything, nigga, it's on. It's on with you, nigga. I don't want to be your friend or none of that. It's on. On that thing, bro. I drop bag behind my wife. I ain't going to lie to you, bro. Any nigga say something about my wife, bro, you better look over your shoulder for the rest of your fucking life. On that, don't play with my wife, nigga. On that thing, because she got more money than you. She got more property, and when her family leaves, she gonna have way more than your mama leave and your daddy leave when they leave this motherfucker. Yeah, they ain't leaving you shit on that thing. That's the difference between our people. But we don't get shit on that thing, bro. Motherfucker, who they leave it to to break down the wheel? They sell, they they keep the wheel. Nah, he ain't say you get nothing on that thing. Whole time you in the wheel on that thing. So just think wise when you say that, man. My wife decent, man. <laughs> She ain't got no worries, bro. On that thing. She ain't got no worries in life, man. I'm, I'm blessed that I got one. Hey, guy with the fake. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Y'all already know. Shout out 16 shot, though. On that thing. But, yeah, man. Shout out to everybody on here, man. It's 1142. 
we got we got roughly 12 minutes man if y'all want to ask any questions y'all want to ask shout out to tribe Lord ross shout out to queen lotus man you ain't following our channel make sure you follow shout out to ray duck shout out to um uh, um kaya baby shout out to nc man if you ain't following her channel make sure you follow shout out to made media magazine if you ain't following his channel follow his channel you see hood man get c hood up to 50k man i got something for y'all man when c hood get up to 50k i'm a mass reveal man i'm a mass reveal and i'm gonna drop my other book when c hood gets to 50k man y'all gotta get hood to 50k if you want to see my face i'm gonna go live with hood with my face good hood to 50k i just hollered when you said um they ain't leaving they ain't leaving you shit. hey yeah they ain't leaving you shit, bro Niggas ain't leaving you shit. Motherfuckers don't need have insurance. The motherfuckers be flashing all this money. If they die tomorrow, man, motherfuckers gonna be talking about, can you donate for us? On that thing. Or oh, I did the best I could at his funeral. On some real shit. But talking all this money shit, bro. That's why I don't even brag about no money, bro. Because niggas who brag about money, nine out of ten times, man, they gonna have a GoFundMe up soon when they die. mass on or off we rocking with you love y'all man but i ain't got nothing to do with c hood getting 50k in that mass i ain't got shit to do with that like we can get them to 50k off the strength but you already know fam hey i'm in uk 5 a.m miles behind still on vine and all this way um was known and he still got a, a moral shit. hey yeah we're gonna get duck a moral though we're gonna get duck a moral man i'm gonna make sure duck get a moral bro if I got to go and paint that motherfucker myself on somebody's wall, Duck going to hide something on that thing. He going to hide something because Duck a legend, bro. He a motherfucking legend, bro. And he deserves he deserve some type of painting, bro. Hey, matter of fact, do anybody paint? Fuck that. Do anybody paint, spray paint, or anything? I got a wall on 63rd, man. Y'all can spray paint. We ain't trying to hear nothing that they talking about. And if they touch that motherfucking wall, we blessing their crib. Who know how to spray paint or something, man? We need something for Duck. I'll pay y'all on that thing. Duck needs something. We need somebody who could come with some spray paint cans and spray paint a whole big-ass duck face on that thing, man. Matter of fact, spray paint Duck and put brick on the side of him, man. Oh, you know what? Put Duck and put Pappy on the wall next to him and put um, JoJo and them up there and put somebody else. Put even Vine up there. Put all them motherfuckers on the wall. Who know how to do that? Do anybody know how to paint? Because if you know how to paint, I got a wall on 6th, 3rd, y'all could do it. And I'm going to have 12 sitting out there with us, so ain't little Ray Ray and them ain't going to come fuck with us. Why is we painting the moral? Man, I'll pay a motherfucker right there on St. Lawrence. Can we spray paint the side of this building? I mean, they should be hot then, though. Everybody will be coming. Everybody going to be pulling up to their building, though. That shit is going to be reckless. Sound like Dave Chappelle. You want to see my face? Get C-Hood to 50K. Hell yeah, Jake. 240, honey. Yeah, let's get Duck and Moru, man. It's time to get Duck and Moru, man. They call all the sloppy six, man. Now it's time to get Duck and Moru now, man. Let's, dig let's get Duck and Moru, man. Hey, hey, this is what I want to say, man. Hey, look, for all you motherfuckers who keep on inboxing me, talking about BJ ain't tell. Hey, look, let me read this for you. Old Block BJ arrested with gun and did what Shark on Land 600 did. That's all I said on the title. Now, if you go and watch the video, I said that BJ did the same that Shark on Land. And I explained it. BJ went in there and told the police that it wasn't his gun, but... He didn't just say it wasn't his gun. He said that you didn't ask everybody if they gun in front of everybody. Because if you would have asked in front of everybody, they would have took their gun. That's just like saying that it's one of their guns. Or however you look at it, 
just hey look just go and get just go back to language arts and shit like that get your comprehension back up if you think i said that what i'm saying is if we not going to say nothing about um bj then we shouldn't say nothing about shark that's all i'm saying man bottom line you know what i'm saying shout out to all y'all man we got seven minutes man smash that like button super chat um cash app i m a n i three eight three seven that's money sign i m a n i three eight three seven man on that thing um support the channel i got my mind is my nine gear i got hoodies i got t-shirts um we got everything we got my man is my nine socks we got everything my man is my nine man we got hats scullies sweaters shirts um we got all that man make sure y'all make sure y'all support us at nini Nini marie 37 or you can hit me up for the merch man we got all the merch we even got my man is my nine mask um coming up nini making the um my man is my nine mask and we're gonna have all that you know what i'm talking about so make sure y'all be looking out for that man shout out to all y'all hey swipe i just got here i'm watching from the beginning on my tv listening to you from my phone and you are the truth i've been here since almost day one keep going shout out um zenobia hey shout out zenobia man shout out the whole dmv hey that's zenobia hold on let me see is that her who said that hey shout out zenobia hey is that zenobia from um um dc no, no. If, if they from DC, then they she she been with me. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's Zenobia. Yeah, that. I mean, she probably ain't got no no page. That's Zenobia though. I know that's her. I know that's for a fact. Her. She from DC. She been on my page so long. Ain't nobody finna make up no Zenobia name like that. Yeah, do wop the dime. I ain't choosing no size. I ain't shaking coat nothing. If, 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 if that's what I told Bezu, man. Hey, look, I'm reporting about everything. You fuck up, I report. If y'all don't want me to report about shit, then y'all need to stop coming on the internet dropping dropping blues clues on everything. Because if I got a feeling the story, my it's gonna be at 50k to 75k. Shout out Hungry Mama 773, Hungry Mama 773, man. Shout out Hungry Mama 773. If you're in the Chicagoland area, you're in the Rogers Park area, Howard Street, Hungry Mama 773 has the best food, man. Got the best food in Chicago, man. Y'all go and check them out, Hungry Mamas, man. Shout out Prince Easy, man. Um, Shout out C-Hood, my boy on the road to 50K. Make sure y'all smash that like button for me, y'all. Smash that like button. Subscribe to my channel. Join the membership, man. I got more shit coming up for y'all, man. We we working on getting the book out, me and Nene. And um throw her right under the bus. Mm -hmm. Uh and um, uh, shout out to all my moderators, man. My moderators got channels, man. Y'all going make sure y'all follow them, man. Follow my mods, man. Shout out DC, man. Shout out my boy Savage Black too. Shout out my boy Savage Black. TRL definitely does um research. Hey hippie, shout out hippie, a new member. Damn, I can see the um the super chat thing. That's cool. Shout out Nino Jackson, man, for the super chat, man. Shout out um Silas Lee, man, for the super chat. Swipe was good from New Jersey. Shout out New Jersey. New New Braxton, man. Sound like that boy was really um about laying that um uh, murder game down. Yeah, he do sound like a serial bowl killer. Um, and then he has some. He has some apple jacks in his hand, man. He really a cereal. Um, new new Braxton, man. Shout out new new Braxton. C C um B 107, man. Swipe. Did you notice um you in the documentary? Hey man, I still ain't seen myself in the documentary. I must have went crazy for, for 20 for two seconds and then they went to another scene. What I say? Whatever I said, I meant it though. You know what I'm talking about. Even though it's old, I meant that shit. Whatever I said, I, it's the truth. Um, help one of your people with a good heart. 
who needs to swipe god bless shout out matthew with him man appreciate it sick life don dada man swipe you a real one bro from florida shout out the whole florida man definitely shout out my granny now and miami my cousin now shout out kaya baby for show sure, man shout out tampa bay florida man when i went they laid out the red copper for me shout out the whole orlando um shout out everybody in florida man everybody in atlanta everybody in new york new jersey south carolina north carolina texas new orleans shout out shout out gangsta williams man i fuck with you gangsta man you been on some real shit to me man you changed your life i was a kid when you was in jail in prison we most of us was kids when you was in prison so we don't know what the fuck's going on but i respect you as a man for telling your stories and telling the youth to not go through it i know you got a son who in the feds like you was and all that but i, I respect you as a man not as whatever they trying to uh, make everybody hate you for i respect you as a man first shout out sick um shout out um shout out um jessica walker jessica walker sending love from memphis tennessee god bless shout out jessica walker for the super chat man appreciate all y'all love support man everybody on here if you want to support the cash app money sign i m a n i 3837 shout out trap lord ross man everybody at trap lord ross man tell him let's connect for a video man let's connect up man let's split the profits man and let's get back to chicago hey trap lord ross hey look they won't they they ain't gonna complain man if you put some bikes in the neighborhood man that's one thing i know about them they don't complain if you doing something man and then you might come through and do more than these niggas. so you know what i'm talking about it don't matter if you from my city right or right wrong is wrong these niggas up in here incriminating each other they they incriminating they every move they talking about murders and robberies um they they putting this shit on the internet in 2012. Not niggas arguing about it in time about he bogus in 2023. What was you at in 2012 and 13 and 14 and 15 when this motherfucker was talking about he eating cereal, killing motherfuckers? That's what I want to know. But can't nobody answer them questions. You know what I'm talking about? Can't nobody answer none of them questions. Them the real questions. What was you at in 2012, 13, 14, 15 to be complaining now that this guy Trap Lord Ross then put some shit out that's already been out? He ain't doing nothing that ain't already been out. Vaughn said, I got bodies from way back. I'm like, shit. <laughs> this 2020, he said he got bodies from way back. I'm like, this little nigga dumb than a motherfucker. He going to jail. You hear me? Like, man. Like, shout out to y'all, though. Shout out to Trap Lord Ross. Shout out to Prince Easy, Hungry Mom 773. I love y'all. Appreciate all y'all love. Support. Shout out all my moderators, man. Shout out my cousin Muggs, Sandy, Sandy um, Muggsy, Muggsy West. Shout out Michael Johnson, man. My other big cousin, man. Uh, all y'all love support. Shout out Kenny Rogers, man. Uh, all y'all love support. Shout out the whole Danville, Peoria, uh, Rockford, uh, Springfield, Decatur. Shout out everywhere that I ever touched, man. Shout out everywhere that I ever touched. Champaign, Bloomington, um, all that shit. Kankakee um all every every town that i didn't touch the illinois man i got history and some type of story man that made me that shaped my life man so i appreciate all the towns man y'all make sure y'all smash the like button hit the rewind shout out trap laura ross shout out all y'all man shout out all y'all who support me man i appreciate it man but just trust the news man tell your kids they matters they nine at the end of the day they are somebody and if you don't agree with that man stop it how your kids watch this shit how your kids watch this shit? I bet you your kids, after they watching shit like that, they ain't going to want to be like that nigga. They going to want to change their life. They like, this nigga killing people, eating cereal. We don't want to do that weird shit. You hear me? So make sure y'all show y'all kids that in Chicago, stop being mad. Stop being mad at a, at, at a lesson. Stop being mad at a lesson. Everybody mad that this shit being talked about, but this a fucking lesson for the kids. This is what's going to happen when you do shit like this. You're going to end up dying still. But until you die, you're going to have to vent out all the people that you killed. You're going to have to talk about this shit because it's eating your mind. But this just news, man. I love y'all, man. Shout out to all y'all, man. Appreciate all y'all love support. Y'all showed out tonight. Make sure y'all show out like this tomorrow, man. Shout out to all my moderators, man. Appreciate y'all, man. Tell your kids they matter. They nine. They are somebody. If you don't agree with that, man, stop it, man. Shout out Big Les too, man. Shout out Big Les, Big Deal um bando bando bandana rose shout out all y'all from my city in chicago man appreciate all y'all man shout out x-man rico seti nash king ak-47 truth teller um man shout out everybody man shout out everybody man you can learn something from everybody 
I don't hate on people. I know they hate me because I be flying. My numbers be flying and shit, and they be trying to discredit me. I be hearing a lot of shit. I be hearing a lot of shit. You know what? But I got angels all around me. They keep me surrounded. I'm out.